Well, that means tea time has officially begun. Welcome, everyone, to a special Wednesday edition of Tea Time. Here we have many things to discuss. You know, for once, uh, we do. We used to run the show uh, weekly. Then we started not, not getting any content, so we couldn't do that anymore. But now we can bring Tea Time back because we actually have one of the biggest updates and uh, biggest things to talk about for a very, very long time. And that is, of course, uh, the fact that, you know, 2021 is the year of Guild Wars 2, except actually 2022 is the year of Guild Wars 2, because we've got to wait a little bit longer now. We have to wait until 2022 to get the new expansion, End of Dragons, but also there are some other very exciting things going on here as well, particularly surrounding the upper echelons of ArenaNet's leadership. With me here today, I have... My glamorous assistants, Brazil Inks. Oh, and the Zandri as well, I suppose, uh, up there as well. Welcome to the show, everyone. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys for coming on uh, today. How are you guys doing on this wonderful, wonderful evening? Or well, actually, probably not evening for you guys, but it is for me, so that's what counts. After great, <laughs> fantastic. I've had a lot of coffee. I wanted to be the person that uh, that didn't have tea, so. That's what I'm working on right now and trying to show your cam to everybody. <laughs> so, everyone's like, we can't see Teapot. I'm like, oh, right. He's streaming. Let me, uh. Yes, I do not exist. Right I have not, I have not even materialized. He's a yet. pink teapot. Exactly. <laughs> that is indeed correct. It's ma It's matching my background there. But anyway, let's dive into uh, what we have to deal with today. So the recent big news, in fact, there's been some more news even today, actually. Arena really stepping up their game with some of these blog posts uh, and little video teaser trailer thingies. However, the really big thing to talk about here is a massive leadership change at ArenaNet. Now, you know, typically it has been like, you know, kind of, oh, you know, guess the game director. That's been Guild Wars 2 for a pretty long time now, you know, and also it has been a bit of a cursed job. They haven't really, uh, haven't always lasted that long, uh, to be honest. And of course, there's been a lot of mystery around that. But now we actually have a very, very public post about this and some very surprising information as well. Now, of course, Zandri, you uh, probably weren't here, actually, um, in, to know some of these uh, kind of old-school Guild Wars 2 devs. But, yes, that is indeed right, my friends. Colin Johansson is back. The original hype man for Guild Wars 2 is back on the game after a brief stop at Amazon to kill the competition by making Crucible. Uh, well, I don't know what happened there, guys. That wasn't that good. And, of course, we even have um, uh, Josh Davis, also known as grouch who is a big uh, competitive game mode enthusiast too and i think this is a really really big paradigm shift for arena net because it's a, i think it's a big surprise for anyone that you know it, arena net uttering the words we want to make world versus world a cornerstone game mode right if someone had leaked that i would have said it's actually a lie and it's fake Right. Um, but no, no, that actually is the reality of the situation. And I think this is going to be a really big switch up um, to Guild Wars 2 over the coming months and certainly going into the expansion. And, you know, just to kind of open up this dialogue here with, with regarding to the recent news about the leadership at Arena, I am super curious, actually, uh, what your kind of view on this uh, as a newer player is, Zandri. Like, what do you make of the situation here? Like, you know, I, do you know, you know, do you have the context to know what's going on? Or is it like, who the hell are these people? And what's going on? Who are they talking about? I actually didn't know who they were <laughs> at first. Uh, I, I read the announcements and everything. And all I could think of was that everybody's like, we don't have enough hype around the expansion, right? Like, we just don't have enough. And so I'm really hoping that with Colin being the hype man, that everything will be set up. Um, and that they actually have a producer that's keeping everything actually streamlined, which is amazing. Like actually having a creative director that is going to make it so they don't have 20 different ideas and then scrap them all because they haven't decided on one thing is, I think, incredible. Because I feel like those are the only things that people were really upset about uh, with ArenaNet. Well, recently, I guess. Although some people were actually... Um, upset about Colin, I guess. So I don't know if we can talk about that, but some people had mentioned to me that one of the things he wanted to do was keep uh, like guilds behind uh, having to purchase this, uh, the expansions and things like that. So I think it's a good thing. I don't know what everybody else thinks. I think the, the wardrobe for the legendaries is amazing, especially because my bank is already full. 
and my inventory is already full and I get picked on about it all the time, so. <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one then. I'm not the only one who gets bullied for <laughs> <No>. that. Yeah. <laughs> that and is... I haven't even started with that stuff, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, the, the, this, yeah, the, the legendary armory is a really interesting one there because that is the ultimate long-term progression. That That is actual years of progression for most players in the game. But speaking of players who have been playing this game and complaining about this game for a very long time, Inks. Tell me. Me? I thought yeah. you were going with Brazil. Brazil? No, wait, wait, no. I, I don't complain about this game. I love Bra this game. Brazil's positive now. About. Like, have you not seen New Brazil? <laughs> I'm afraid you're, you know, you guys have reversed roles. Right? We've like, reversed roles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the New Brazilian, so you have to start calling everyone wrong, oh, okay. roasting All people, right, right? And, and telling us how the news is terrible. So take it away. Well, the news isn't terrible, fortunately for ArenaNet. <laughs> the news is fantastic. Uh, Colin was a big hype guy, and he was really good with facing with the community. So super happy to see Colin back, and super happy to see Grouch back as well. Grouch is another one who uh, players might not be quite as familiar with him because he was more structured PvP facing, but Grouch was the big go-between go the pro players and ArenaNet. And when he left and they didn't replace him, not really, anyway. Uh, structured PvP, competitive structured PvP sort of fell apart for a long time. So, uh, which which was a real shame because right up until his departure, they were on, they were actually on a high from Worlds, uh, the world structured PvP event that happened. Indeed. And so anyway, so so seeing so seeing Grouch come back and seeing Colin come back, both of them had uh, very positive influences on the game, uh, positive influences on the community. And, you know, in anybody's work resume, there is going to be sidesteps, failures, flops and so forth. And I don't think that you should be too critical of that as a player. Um, focus on the good that they did for the game and continue to do for the game. And on top of that, we got introduced to JT. I think is that's his name, right? JT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and him and Colin are going to be, you know, double heading the beast of Arena Net and uh, moving forward from there. And, and hearing that they want to make Rovers World Cornerstone again is is big news for me because that's kind of the only format I currently really play or that I'm super interested in. So nothing but good news for me anyway. Yeah, and I think that certainly ties into alliances, right? Which were also confirmed there, right? Like wanting to get that out the door. Oh, uh, before, geez. alliances yeah. this year. <laughs> this year, this indeed. year, this year. Yeah. yeah, and you know, you know, it, it's funny actually. I, I think, um, I, I think you know, a lot of, of developers who are into PvP, uh, such as Grouch, right? They kind of uh, they get painted with the idea that they're they're into PvP specifically, but this is actually uh, not quite the full story. Actually, like, for example, uh, you know, Ben P is also a very a famous dev who's into a lot of PvP, but he's also a big patron of uh, all areas of the game, really, including competitive PvP. It really is that kind of competitive spirit that you're going to see pushed here, uh, rather than just necessarily only PvP. A great example of this, actually, it is Grouch, and, and Grouch is a history of doing this. Um, and really kind of uh, trying to get contact with the players and pushing things forward. Because actually, a very, very long time ago, Brazil will remember this, back when he was Brazil DNT, uh, in fact. Of course, there was that a... long ago? Yeah, that long ago. Yeah, there was a dungeon tournament run, right? Uh, with the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that one. And that one that one got supported because Nike contacted Grouch directly, right, um, to actually get that done. And it was the same thing, by the way, with some of uh, my raid tournaments that I ran. Um, in fact, you know, a, a raid net kind of, you know, I went through the... Quote, Got normal channels to get it done and they said no right and then i went to grouch and he said yes and we got prizes and stuff so you know just because uh grouch is a pvp guy this does not mean that there's going to be any level of neglect to any of the other game modes whatsoever i very much think it is going to be you know an all-out assault on making guild wars 2 great again uh, over the coming year and you know you you talked about how jt and colin are kind of heading up uh, this team, and I actually think this is a really interesting approach that ArenaNet's taken here uh, by almost splitting the uh, the roles of the the game directors. Essentially, they they essentially have three game directors in a way, with Grouch uh, handling the live game, right? And basically, the kind of like what's coming up uh, is going to be handled there by uh, by Colin and JT. Pretty interesting stuff. Well, that's 
presumably how it is because of course the official title for grudge is like you know he's the head of live basically right he's the live guy and then basically you know colin and jt are doing some expansion stuff i presume or kind of like you know developing the content uh, that's coming through uh, further on that is certainly a very interesting approach there i think and just a good way to go about doing things right you know like and, and to have these divided roles so you don't have one person having to keep track of literally everything that's happening in the game that seems to make a lot of sense to me uh at any rate there so that's fantastic news in my opinion with regards to that um certainly with with the leadership change and i think i'm very excited actually because uh, arena has had a lot of issues where they don't have a clear they, they seem to have lost their vision you know arena has has had been a company that did have a very strong idea for guild wars 2 but as the expansions came and went and time passed they seemed to get a little bit lost right okay like it was they, you know it, things stopped going super well and you know the game you know i think a lot of people would say the game decayed and i think this is exactly what the game needs like the game needs this like breath of fresh air to elevate it back to where it belongs which you know and you know they have certainly uh, decided to go about doing that and i think we're already seeing um the fruits of these decisions and this leadership structure because you know like we're getting a lot of communication uh there's new stuff well new stuff coming back into the game fairly regular right now and plenty of communication there as well so i don't you know again this will be very unusual and, and this is why i am super interested uh to, to keep keep getting i want to keep getting checked here uh by Xandria on this because uh, you haven't played the game for super long and well just take it from me this is unrecognizable from the arena a year ago or two years ago this is unrecognizable right completely different huge here. yeah huge <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I would say too that my favorite, the golden age for me, not mm. just a, as a content creator, but as a player, was pre and post Heart of Thorns. Um, even with the problems of the content gap that happened after Heart of Thorns, but that expansion itself and the lead up to that expansion were uh, the most memorable and best times that I had in Guild Wars 2. And both of these guys, and what, while it certainly it takes many, many, many people to make that happen, both of these guys were in important positions and are now back in important positions within the company. Yep. Well, yeah. Is it okay if I jump in? Oh, yeah, us? yeah, let's go. Okay, so, like, another thing is, like, the only thing that I'm skeptical about is that, like, Colin and Grouch have made a bunch of big talk in the past. And like was like Colin announced like precursor crafting like in like 2013 <laughs> or 2014. Oh, man. He's like, we really want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> we really want to do this. It's gonna be great. He's like, we want to add all this QL stuff. We want to add scavenger hunts. Like he wanted to do all of the stuff that happened like within the last year or two, like ages ago and i guess it just didn't work out with like the engine and like arena net how it was running at the time um and like grouch grouch is like we want full esports we want like world championships we want cash prizes we want community events like we want all this stuff and they're coming back in the way that they've like said it now and like they've they've sold me on it being true and legit um i believe them this time because like a couple of things is like they said we're gonna push the release date back to early 2022 which like i'm totally cool with that if like they can deliver a better product and it takes like three months longer to come out please do it because oh my god we just had cyberpunk 2077 and everyone got mad about that so by all means like take a little bit longer if you need to and like legendary armory not being monetized i thought that would never happen mm -hmm. like i thought that was impossible and I thought they were just like being vague and like borderline lying whenever they said that it's going to be free to use or whatever, because like we know how, you know, the lying initially went with the legendary armor the first time around. Um, but like it just I'm really like in a really I'm in a really good mood about this. I think this is all like really great news. I think that like Grouch and Colin actually really do care about the game. Um, I think that they at the very least, I think they really want to do all the things that they're saying. Um, if it, if it, if it happens, you know that's that's amazing. Like it's Guild, Guild Wars two to the game. Like it's literally not even the same game anymore. Um, but if it happens, I mean, they've said it would 
happened before. Like they've talked about alliances for four years, basically. So I don't know. It would be cool for it to happen. I think it probably will. And I think it's all great news, but you know, we'll see. We'll see. I feel like how many things, are there things that they've kind of announced that they've gone back on previously, like in the past? Because a lot of people like still don't even trust alliances. Oh, like yes. with it actually being announced, <laughs> like let legitimately me, let, announced let, though. Like I'm actually curious. Me, this this is Brazil's me, specialty. Me, Brazil's me, specialty. Me, specialty. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you some stories <laughs> okay. about arena men back on their words. Um, so when Heart of Thorns was announced, they announced new challenging group content, which was raids. They said that raids would be coming out, I believe, every few months. Crystal Reed said that in a like interview on like TwitchCon or like something like maybe it was PAX like during the PC section she's like we're gonna do raids all the time it's gonna be awesome um they announced Stronghold like in the Heart of Thorns trailer a new competitive PvP game mode well they killed that really fast like it doesn't exist anymore um the world versus world Borderlands like the desert Borderlands they talked a lot of shit about that and they're like this is gonna be awesome you guys are gonna love it and we found out through people that were testing that like world versus world guilds that were asked to come test that content that arena that just ignored them and didn't listen to them for all the feedback they gave and they just shoved the desert borderlands out and literally no one played it because everyone hated it so yeah six wings a year is what chad's <laughs> saying i think that's probably what they were gonna say like we have seven total and it's been what since like 2015 it's been like six years yeah no way no that's not good um right. that's like six wings a year just lol okay and like legendary armor this is just like a pet project of mine. <laughs> um, they said they were going to go back and fix glow channels they said they were going to look at like the thief trench code i think like they said they're going to do some things to it and i said it's not going to happen because they've already dumped the product out they don't have to change anything they can tell you that they're going to do it but they're not going to do it and like at this point like the skins free transmutations for all legendary gear oh my god the runic armor looks better i'm just going to skin over the legendary armor because the skins on it are not that great um but that's awesome so like they didn't fix that um like alliances is a big thing like alliances for all the world versus world players like that's just huge like that's so big like pvp has been completely neglected like pvp has been exactly the same other than balance changes basically like since heart of thorns PvP has just been you buy an expansion and you get gold two automatically with elite specs. And then like the good players just grind platinum and troll the ATs. And there are bots. There are bots everywhere and they don't ban the bots. And they did have one ban wave and they banned people. Uh, well, we'll just, that was a little extreme. They banned a bunch of people that had empty text files on their computer because of the way it was hashed whenever their anti-cheat was running. Uh, so that was, that was bad. They, they, there was a, a lot of stuff. Inks, was, go ahead, please. There was a partner who got smashed by that. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. He was a PvP guy, I think. Wait, really? Naru? Wrongly N banned. Yeah. Oscar? I don't remember. No, no. What did they get banned for? They, they got banned for that false flag. Uh, well, oh. His account, his account got banged that false Olrun. flag by Olrun. saying. It was Olrun. Olrun. Yeah, yeah. Olrun, exactly. <gasps> Felt really bad for Old Run because uh, he was a nice guy, and it was a false flag that he got banned for, and uh, I don't think it ever got resolved. Yeah, that, 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 it, I will it, say it this: actually, I, it did get resolved. He got unbanned after like hmm. close to two years. <laughs> wow! Ouch! Ouch! Um, but um, I will say this about the world: the, the alliances announcement is interesting because I think, and please correct me if you guys feel differently about this, but I feel like it's a different precedent for arena net it's not how they normally do business so to speak in that they're going to release it in a beta ish oh. format oh. and then and then iterate on it as they go forward to continue to improve it normally and this is what it has been so far you see and hear nothing about alliances for years and they work on it in the background without really getting meaningful feedback this way they release it in some sort of beta format like like they said in, in the thing and you can play it and you can give them feedback and they can make adjustments as they go along 
And more importantly, they won't just drop it immediately, right? They're going to keep actually making it. This has been one of the most annoying things about ArenaNet historically, is that they take an idea like raids or fractal or strike missions or PvP or World vs. World or, or anything pretty much in the game. They ship it and then they move on to the next thing. Oh, yeah, that's done. Never looking at that ever again, right? Okay, see ya. Have fun, guys. Enjoy it, right? And then, you know, there's bugs in it. There's, like, issues with the way it's designed, right? It just doesn't get fixed ever right and this has been what this is you know to us good point there inks for reminding me about that because this actually might be the most important thing because look arena has ideas so good that all the other mmos copy them right like like wow just stole fractals and just said you know what this is a really popular game mode now right what a great idea but guild wars 2 no we're just gonna leave fractals as they are and never fix any of the issues with them not a problem there, right? And this is just the thing. Like, Arena has really good ideas, but they historically haven't really taken them and iterated upon them. And the fact that they're changing that and they're going to be really focusing on feedback, right, and responding to the player base is absolutely huge. This is incredible that they're going in this direction. And, you know, like, just uh, as, as another thing here as well, right, like, this is a big step forwards for Arena, I think, because, and I think Arena is very aware of this, I, I think Arena isn't stupid, I think they know, that because, um, you know, you were talking about this, Andrew, how people were saying that, oh, we don't believe it, we don't believe it, this is because, and let me be, let me be polite about this, ArenaNet has systematically deconstructed the player base's trust in them over the years, to the point where nobody believes what they say, sorry, ArenaNet, right? But it's true. Which, which, um, right yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> which, which, by the way, <laughs> like ArenaNet kept saying, Legendary Armory, which is amazing, uh, would be free, and nobody believed them. E even I sent like two additional tweets saying, <laughs> yeah, now same. when you say free, I, yeah. do you mean like it won't cost gems, but it will cost gold, or is it going to cost Mystic Coins, or like when you say free, what do you mean by free? Because none of us believe like we've been conditioned to not believe it's actually going to be included. Yeah, and and this this is why I think this is a I, I think Arena understands right. I think Arena understands this, and this is why they're doing stuff like bring back old content that's you know very widely loved, like the Twisted Marionette, uh, World Boss Sword Alliances, engine upgrade, right? Like this, th this to me feels like a really really sh big show of good faith, and the fact that Arena wants to build up that trust with the player base and with the consumer again which is in my opinion absolutely essential and this is a really really important point because arena can say all they want if nobody believes them then it doesn't really count for that much uh and this is particularly true when you're talking about actually pushing your expansion like you know if, if you i think you know the really really big example of this right now in, in the current mmo industry is final fantasy right like everyone's going crazy everyone's so hyped for end just gonna bring that up right? people are going <laughs> berserk right they're just going going crazy uh, but about Guild Wars 2, people are kind of like, eh, I'm not, I'm not sure about it, right? And and this is because historically, right, you know, like, if you get hyped up, you get burned. And and this is what, um, I think this is what uh, w was brought up earlier about Colin, right? Like, this was this was the thing about Colin, is that, yeah, Colin may be a hype man, he is a very charismatic figure, but oh, it did kind of backfire. And, and, and in a way, this is kind of what led to the very, very hands-off, closed door policy of ArenaNet with this is that they they very they hyped it up big they hyped up a lot of stuff and they didn't do it everyone was really angry so they said right we're just not going to say anything anymore uh and then you know, the spiral the downward spirals there that is ancient history right there and look you know like if you want to go hear about that guys just go back and like watch all the old tea times right and then have a trip down memory <laughs> lane uh right Months there. of tea times <laughs> yeah <laughs> years dude years of tea times and you can go check that out that out there as well but i mean yeah it's um it is hopefully very much in the past and yeah and, and you know and, and um yeah you can you can tell us a little bit about uh you know kind of like the the hype surrounding these games andrew i think i think you have a great perspective on this as a player who did actually just come from another game but yeah i think arena wants to get into that hype zone where people are actually willing to get excited about features that arena might be promising even uh, at the end of this month with the 27th but uh i would love to hear like your input on this as a player who has recently Okay, abandon ship and <laughs> join the uh, join the slightly leaky boat of Guild Wars 2. Well, actually, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Especially with them delaying the expansion and not talking about really hyping it until now. 
because one of the things that's going on and why 14 is so big right now is because everybody has a really good relationship with the devs. That's why all of their monetization works. That's why everybody is okay with giving them their money. You know, like their amounts that are single person mounts, there are amounts that are a couple of people mounts, there are now mounts that are like a full party, which is eight people. And they're actually really expensive and people don't care because they really tw uh, trust the devs. They've had everything out for patch cycles, like on a schedule and kind of the, the bad thing for World of Warcraft for Blizzard right now. And the reason that people are moving over is because there has been a content drought and they delayed Shadowlands and then didn't have 9.1 out until pretty much a year later for the first patch. And so people were upset about that and they're like, we want our patches to be out on a cycle. And so they started moving over to Final Fantasy 14 and 14, you know, also people think like it's boring because it's tab target, but when you're playing World of Warcraft and something is being hyped up so much and they have all of these trailers and they do all of these announcement showcases on top of a letter from the producer, which is literally uh, all, uh, probably a couple of times um, and uh, like it's once every two months, they actually have a bunch of devs, designers and the producer talk about the game and everything that you can be excited for. And they do like pictures and, and uh, talk about some things that you can look forward to in the MSQ, um, which is the main story and things like that. And Blizzard is really bad with communication. In the past, people have said ArenaNet is really bad with communication. And so I think that's another thing too. And <laughs> I know that people have complained previously about Guild Wars 2 uh, having one-shot mechanics which they say other MMOs don't have because you don't have to dodge. You just like preemptively move out of something or like it's not as reactionary. Um, so there's that too. So I do know that a lot of people are, they kind of play 14 as well while they're playing Guild Wars 2 because of the way the patch cycles are. So like if you finish the content, you're not working on legendaries or achievements or anything and you're waiting for the expansion, people will just swap over and play Final Fantasy XIV as well, because people will get through like the new patch that has the MSQ, even if like some people think it's not very good because they're just getting it out on a schedule. But they'll complete that, do the latest raids, which you can do very casually, and then come back to Guild Wars 2. So I honestly think that how compatible it is with other games makes it very likable as well. Uh, but I love Guild Wars. <laughs> I love Guild Wars 2 because I like actually making builds and and dodging. And I honestly think that jump puzzles are amazing they're so different the areas are beautiful the music is amazing i haven't even touched fractals yet but i've watched some videos and they look gorgeous and i think their delaying is really good honestly i was talking to people about this earlier so world of warcraft delayed tbc and it ended up being the best expansion which is why people were hoping that because of delaying shadowlands they would completely fix it but then they tore everything down yeah. for 9.1 yikes so it's yeah. a really <laughs> Yeah, it's a really long-winded way of saying that if they actually communicate with people and these betas work, like mm. I know that people are being silly about betas and, and some people really don't like them. They don't like beta testing because a lot of people think, well, it's just going to be something where you're getting paid to test the game when these developers and designers should test the game. And I actually disagree with that because if they have the devs and the designers that are all working toward trying to put something together for you, and with how small that dev team for ArenaNet actually is, all of that should be concentrated on making the game better. And then if people want to do the content first and test it out and help them, that should be something that you, you know, it's, it, it gives the communication with the players that people want. So I don't really know why people would complain about it. You get to see some of the content firsthand sometimes before it actually comes out, which I know people don't like because of spoilers as well, but still. And it's just ways to make the game not broken i mean there are some hearts just in corteria that are still broken because people like uh -oh. they haven't gone back and fixed them uh oh so, she I mean, knows there are. There are. she knows there are uh oh <laughs> and but the other thing is too so people play 14 because there is no beta because they don't want to be spoiled on raids so like they don't have people test them um so they go in and then you have to create the strats on day one and it's really big for it, world first and server first and things like that so um I don't know. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I think everything that came out in the announcement is good. But again, I'm new in hearing it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm all for this. Like the, the only thing for me is the only people who know about Guild Wars are those that play Guild Wars. But then there's like, there are things that a lot of people are really one-sided about too. So <laughs> I think, yeah. so I don't know what you, how you guys feel about the betas. Like some people think it's too spoilery. They think that it's not their job. I don't I think it's a good thing all around. So 
Yeah, I think there there are there are certainly kind of like pros and cons. When it comes to spoilers, just don't play it, right? Like if you don't want to get spoiled, that's fair, right? You don't, you know, if, if you're if you're say, you know, testing you know, on the PTR in World of Warcraft, if you don't want to get spoiled, then just don't play it, like you know, or or just don't look. Right? I I you know, obviously, yeah, it kind of gives you a bit of a heads up. It can kind of maybe potentially kind of ruin it for yourself if you do that. But you know, they're not like saying, oh, you must play on the PTR away, doubling your sub fee, right? That's not what's going on there. And it looks like, I don't think Arena, I don't think Arena will do that. I think they're, they actually play their story like really close to the chest. I don't think they'll put story there. But what they will probably do is they'll put features, right, in, in these betas. Like they're going to be putting features into it rather than the actual content itself. Uh, I think well, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's an argument to be made for like maybe like testing stuff like strike, uh, you know, strike missions or raids and stuff. But I think in general, yeah, like the, the betas for features are overwhelmingly positive. And uh, yeah, I, I think that of course, yeah, it's kind of like, you, you know, oh, you're, you're, you want us to test your game? I think you can look at it like that, but I think a much more charitable and perhaps a, a, a better way of looking at it is saying, they're giving us the opportunity to actually make our voice heard and shape the development of the game, right? You know, we're all playing this game. We love the MMO, right? We love the game. And we now have the, the ability to actually, um, you know, have a, in, in a way, have a hand in what happens in it, right? A, a little bit more directly, you know, a little bit more close quarters than we've previously experienced. Before, it's very much like, okay, we say, hey, Net, do this, right? And then they say, hey, Net, oh, well, here you go, enjoy, right? And then, then it's kind of like the next thing. It's like, oh, well, you know, like, well, we didn't want that, okay? And they say, well, you know, yeah, you, 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 maybe you do, right? But now, now that's not a, <laughs> that's not Don't the case, right? Yeah. You do want these things. Yeah, exactly. If I could, if I could jump in again, <laughs> yeah, um, I <laughs> a lot of the uh, testing. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit. Actually, I think betas are just not a good idea. Um, I think it's, I think it's just a bad idea, actually, because the first time we had. Uh, uh, the heart of thorns beta like you got a portal stone and it dropped from a mob in the open world so you had people that were fucking out farming silver waste for like days straight that never got it and you That's had awesome. people that got it on the first drop and just went straight in and then like here's the shout out to all the people that like regretted playing the beta they're like oh shit i never should just touch this people i don't know if the drop rate was higher or if the like amount of people just trying it out was higher, but people were getting precursors out of the Mystic Forge like nuts. Like people were getting them like crazy. And then it's just like, oh yeah, sorry, you can't take that with you. And of so, course like, not, people, it's a beta. It, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so like that's, but like, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. Like raid testing, it's different because it was alpha, not beta. It's a little bit different, but like it's still kind of the same thing. Raid testing, like holy shit the leaks from that and the drama from that and all the stuff about that like nike's in the chat like it's over and done with and like whatever but like lol that was that was just drama. first hashtag, like, hashtag first, first. Hashtag, hashtag, <laughs> hashtag first like and no i understand that that's why people don't like it for 14 that's what i was well, saying and, like yeah, they've and, never and, had it because of wow and you can have yeah. early strats before it actually goes live but speaking of the drop rates that you were talking about wouldn't you rather have that fixed before the game goes live even if people are just taking the time to like do that and like it sucks because you didn't get it for a couple of days but i'd rather have it be a correct drop rate once the game's actually well, like live. i don't know if it was just like a test server thing that like the mm. like result but like Anyways, okay, like, I think the, the biggest thing with testing, like, I don't know if it happens anymore because I'm not a partner anymore. Hashtag unpartnered. Um, the partner program, there were a lot of leaks from that. And partners got stuff early. And, like, oh, my gosh, like, stabilizing matrices. Like, do we remember that saga? Like, market whenever they figure out market. Like, the partner program testing, literally all that came out of that was videos that came up early of like the most basic surface level content and people got mad at it because partners got access early people were literally they weren't mad that the content was like day that's one that's why you make it a they public were, beta yeah they they were mad that con that partners got it early they were mad about that like it was negative like the partners leaked everything they leaked literally like everything that was coming was leaked they like the trading posts went nuts because like tempest warhorns like the day before Tempest came out, someone bought all of the Tempest Warhorns, like, off the trading post. Like, all this stuff. Um, and then, like, the few times that, like, I found bugs, like, I found 
the like map crash with the script in whatever the fire volcano island is that's about to come back up uh the ring of fire i forget what it's called but like there was a total map crash and i found that in the beta literally i went and found a dev and told them about it showed them how to reproduce it like consistently and they're like we'll have to get to this and they didn't fix it for like two weeks and they had to just hot disable the, the scripting like i my opinion on betas in this game particular is yeah ember bay um is just i don't like them i don't want them like they can upload some content to the youtube channel and show us and then like ask for feedback in the comments which that's gonna have its own thing uh shout out to all the plingas in the chat real fast but that's just that's my take on it I'm so i'm oh, sorry <laughs> it's okay so the first thing to understand um is that arena actually has a third party company that they hire to do much of their testing that they work closely with uh there are qa embeds there are in-house qa people but um a lot of that testing is done by a third party company that they work closely with uh, the, the the other thing about betas is so there so the argument that uh, you're not paying me to test the beta then don't play it it's really quite that simple you have thousands of people I'm, I'm on the um so there's an MMO RPG called Palia I don't yeah, know if I'm saying that, that right looks so good <laughs> looks fun yeah. but th there are thousands and thousands of people they just did a closed alpha test where they invited some members of the discord right i don't know how many doesn't matter but you have people begging to test because they want to play because they want to experience mostly because they want to play the game not not because they care about testing or whatever but you have you, you will always have a group of people who love beta testing or who love getting into betas love trying it out whatever the case is and, and then you have i think a much smaller minority um, and, and of course, I don't have statistical evidence for that, but I think it's a smaller minority that's going to say, you're not paying me to do this, so why should I play the beta? But if that's the attitude, then just don't play the beta. If you're afraid of being spoiled, don't play the beta. Like, it's really just that simple. You're not missing out on anything because anything you do in the beta doesn't translate to the live game. You don't get to keep that progress. You don't, you know, you don't get anything special necessarily most of the time. Uh, rift testing used to sometimes rift the mmo sometimes when you did their beta test they would give you a little um like title or name tag or something like that that almost nobody really saw or paid attention to much like guild wars 2 unfortunately um but you know like you weren't really getting anything for beta testing other than the fact that they hope you provide meaningful feedback and make the game the live game a better experience for everybody right which I'm all for. And then the other thing too, is that devs, a lot of, it's it's really bad, but a lot of devs, if you ask many of them, don't actually play their own game, which it was such why a big thing for Blizzard was like actually giving them like in-game items as a bonus because they don't actually play their own game. Like they just design it, they code it. And so a lot of them don't actually know about these errors. Like they, they don't test them in game because they don't play it. And I would rather have the community give like that feedback to show that you're actually talking to them rather than like you were saying, the third party, or at least that's how I would want it to go. And, and there's a lot of very, very dedicated people in the community. And to be honest, they're going to be able to break it, right? Like this, this is, this is very true um, in the PVE scene, at least. And honestly, definitely true uh, in the PVP scene too. Like players, they are going to break it. They're going to find out. They're going to try literally everything and they'll break it, particularly the most um, you know, kind of dedicated players are honestly going to be very, very effective testers. Now, you know, to kind of briefly address some of these issues, you know, Brazil is not wrong here. There certainly have been a lot of problems. Like, you know, a lot of things did get leaked when guilds were involved. And to be honest, that, that, that might just be like, a maturity problem there to be honest i think there's there you know certainly back there a lot of the people involved were pretty young maybe didn't take it as seriously as they should have done um with regards to the partner program like yeah the, the raid the raid testing was a bit scuffed yeah because like everything got leaked right i mean yeah like literally everything got leaked which is probably probably not that good um but when it comes to, like the partner stuff like yeah there, there have been a few leaks but honestly not that many actually um like, people are talking about the Path of Fire leak. That was leaked by an internal tester. Um, I can't really get too much into it because, you know, like, memes. But partners did not get early access to Path of Fire. Uh, in fact, that's not actually strictly true. Uh, there were a very 
I believe the two partners who got early access were exactly Aurora Peachy and exactly Bogota, I think. Okay, don't Probably. quote me on that. I believe Wooden Potatoes was offered it, but he turned it down. He, had, he talked about this in the video, okay? So there were exactly two partners who got early access, which is fair enough, but like, trust me, those two definitely didn't leak it, okay? Like, there's no way um, that that happened. And yeah, like the stabilizer emergencies that did get leaked, Right, uh, and there have been a few other minor ones. I mean, you know, uh, in fact, Inks has some direct experiences. Inks, uh, you know, <laughs> got trolled by Kevin, in fact. By, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, Inks can tell us the story, but yeah, I, I don't think there have actually been that many like leaks from, from partners, right? Like overall, there have been a few, but it hasn't been that bad. But I mean, actually, yeah, Legendary Armor did get leaked. That was that was content, right, um, a, a while ago. But in general, like, Arena has tightened up their policy on this, right? They don't really, you know, they... they you, there is, it's been a very, very long time since anything has really been leaked uh, from this. And it wouldn't even be a problem if you just made it a little bit more public as well. If it was a public test, then you, it's not leaking because it's public, right? You know, you just kind of see a little bit ahead of time, which I guess kind of ruins the surprise a bit, I guess. But you could always kind of like, you know, hide parts of the game that you don't want to show off, right? For example, if they wanted to do some like public betas, maybe even for the expansion. I don't think they will do that, but suppose they did, right? Um, of course... In Path of Fire, spoiler alert, there's a secret hidden mount, right? Like, it's called the Griffin. Now, obviously, it's a bit more public now, um, as, you know, time has developed it, right? And, you know, you can see it much easier now, and, you know, there's a lot more information. But at launch, no one knew this mount existed. It was the flying mount, uh, essentially, that was very, very fun to use. But it wasn't actually public, you know, you, it wasn't, like, listed uh, initially. You actually had to locate it and kind of find out this thing existed. Now, of course, people did... Um, uh, you know, did find it very, very quickly. But, you know, if they wanted to hide that in the PTR or, or the beta or something like that, they could easily just do that, right? They could just hide it. No, no, that's not in this, right? That's in a different version of the game. I, you can't access it. I don't think the Griffin was leaked, was it? I don't remember ever hearing about any... I don't remember hearing about it until the game launched. Uh, Griffin was leaked, but the acquisition, acquisition method was not. Interesting. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's It's funny, like, the first time I seen the griffin somebody on a griffin landed next to me while i was leveling and i was like what the the hell is that thing you know here yeah, DeRoyer, I, yeah. here deroyer already had it because he powered through it like deroyer does but um like most people didn't have it at that point yeah, yeah deroyer has had legendary armory for like years oh <laughs> like he he, yes, he yes. yeah he's already had it I mean, this is... Well, they said it was 0.008% of the players have more than, say, four copies of Bolt, for example, bound to their account. Um, and I don't know everything that DeRoyer has. I know he has... Um, <laughs> you hate DeRoyer? That's not what I said. Um, he has way too many sigils and runes, for sure. Like, <laughs> he has way too many unlocked on his account. So I, I, I am curious what kind of letter or communication they're going to have with him and those those point zero zero eight percent players that are in that situation uh yeah so just just for clarity before we leap into this basically In inks is just talking uh about the f uh, the fact that the legendary armory is coming out and this is a good topic we can move on to now i think the legendary armory is coming out it's an awesome convenience feature where you can use your pieces of legendary gear including runes and sigils on all of your characters at the same time in every build template and you know it's it's funny actually because obviously legendary oh the, honest I, i'm gonna i we need to tell the story behind legendary armory here actually because it is actually a tragic tale this was probably one of the biggest hammer blows to the community i think this is uh, you know i would even go as far to say that the actual full backstory behind Legendary Armory might have been one of the biggest mistakes Aina ever made. So, Arena added build templates. This is where the, the story of Legendary Armory really kicked off. Arena added one of the longest awaited features in the game, which was build templates, where you could store different builds and then swap between them on the fly. Now, the trouble is here was with their implementation. They monetized it very aggressively. And in order to kind of justify the price, they added this new concept. And this new concept was called Armory Space. So instead of storing gear in your inventory, you would store it in this Armory Space. So in other words, build templates, or rather equipment templates in this case, were in fact equivalent to more bag space, right? They, they allowed you to store your items in this ether and then swap between them dynamically. Now, the problem with this is that it made legendary gear 
significantly worse, particularly because legendary gear was very cumbersome to use with this system. And this was actually one of the big things that put off, um, uh, that put off a lot of players actually big time because they felt that a lot of their work had been invalidated because it closed the gap between ascended and legendary gear to the point where legendaries weren't really that effective anymore uh, and this was all off the back of adding this monetized system so one it wasn't what people wanted two it have invalidated a lot of people's work and none more than our very own okay our very own man from daneland as brazil would say i'm sure um <laughs> Droya. so here Here's some cold this way. This is gonna look, guys. Like this is insane. I've got efficiency up right now. Okay, Daroya has a set of legendary armor complete with runes, sigils, and weapons on every character he has. Every single one. So, and, just, and how many characters is that? Yeah, that well, that's nine. Not one for each profession, right? So nine. Oh, okay, so nine. Okay, so this absolute lunatic, right, has got something. I don't even know how much gold that is. That's probably like a hundred and fifty k, maybe even more than that, gold worth of grind, right? Um, to get all of that set up there. I, I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe that. That is that is ridiculous. And the thing is, he put like I didn't. I don't want to know how many hours he put into this. But essentially, um build templates kind of made that irrelevant and and armory is them adjusting this. so the reason the legendary armory exists is because arena to their credit recognize what they've done they recognize that oh yeah legendary items are a bit pointless now aren't they oh sorry guys whoops and now they're bringing in the legendary armory to kind of rectify that mistake and once again to their credit i know i've been a little bit cynical in the, the past few minutes there to their credit it is an incredibly good convenience feature right and they're actually doing more than they need to where they're giving you free transmutation charges uh, on top of that too which is really nice so now you can like reskin your armor without ever using a transmutation it, it, it means that once you actually get to the ultimate end game of having full legendary on you know in with, with every slot right purple in every hole as they say uh transmutation charges will be I've, completely I've got a irrelevant picture of that. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and i think that's that's quite a special thing actually someone so. link it in chat that is the <laughs> that is the full story uh, of the armory and how the armory came to be and kind of like why it is the way it is and you know like the the, the real uh, the, and the, basically because of this this is kind of like a, another bit of a meme because obviously when they then it was kind of like a double kick in the teeth for deroya right because he was already like big mad about like build templates and then after that then they say oh yeah by the way you know those nine sets you grinded those 54 legendary roots <laughs> Well, you only need six of those, buddy. Have fun, right? And and this is why Inks brought this up because uh, basically they they put in their post it. And once again, this is very well done by a readnet. And I I you know I do give them really big props for actually considering this because this is something that they typically don't always do actually. Um, and uh, and it's the fact that they are actually considering the extreme here. And the extreme is that there are a lot of there are well a lot. There is naught point naught naught eight percent of the community basically has done what Dorora has done as like hard cap the legendary armory. And I am honestly super hyped what they're actually going to do. Like I hope it's more than just like giving them uh you know giving them like the gold back. It might just be they just refund all the gold because it hold that would be a lot of gold. Oh my god. But I I you know honestly I think it should be something else. Okay, Th this might be a really hot take. I, this would make people are so mad if um if this is the case by the way but i honestly hope they do this i hope they give them like a special title for doing it right you know like just you know um it, you know like insane right like insane in the membrane right okay like, that's what you get um for for doing this like ahead of time and then no one else can get it i, I think that would be super cool if they actually did something like that like a cus you know a special title for people who have actually gone that far before it even exists but i'm very very curious to see what they actually end up getting as compensation for uh basically having a lot of their work just you know turn to ash because you know the legendary armory uh, is coming to save the quality of life there as well that would be a lot of fun um if, if they do and something actually yeah. i think the legendary armory just for like especially trying to get new players to come out for like everybody being really excited for eod and talking about a new expansion is a huge business move depending on what free means like whenever you look at somebody's like content, right? And people are like, I don't know what to do. There's no gear chase at the end, horizontal progression. And they're like, work on your legendaries. So if that's what you're telling these new people to do and then they get them all having that legendary armory and having it be 
free <laughs> would be absolutely amazing. The only thing is, and I was actually talking to my fiance about this last night, is because a lot of people, when they see fashion as the end game, a lot of them, like you said, will use legendaries instead of other things. And if the transmutation charges are going to be free, will there be a transmutation charge sink because of that so that you don't gain a ton because all you do is swap between your legendary? So yeah. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but... People brought this up as a concern, but 0.008 is not a very big number, right? And and I think this is what I think this is what we need to keep in mind as, you know, perhaps slightly sweatier players is that the I you know most people are going to have like one legendary. Like, you know, one of the one things that gets memed a lot is that you'll see posts on the Reddit where people will say and and unironically say, "I am so happy. I've been working on a legendary for 5 years and now I finally finished it. And and this is probably more in tune with the average player experience than, you know, than saying, I just finished my ninth legendary armor <laughs> set, right? That, that's just not going to happen. I mean, like, this, you're, you're talking like years of grind, even if you're pretty damn hardcore about it. So I don't think they'll add any kind of sync for this. I just don't think it's necessary. I mean, players who play as much as Deroya or, or, or even me, right? You know, like... um. I, I have 5,000 transitation charges, and I don't really play Fashion Wars that much, I guess, but even if I did, there's no way I would ever exhaust the supply I have because of just, you know, because of just playing a lot. Uh, that might be a little bit different for more casual players, but more casual players are also not going to have nine sets of legendary armor, so it's not really going to be... Uh, I don't think it's really a big deal there as well. And and it is... By the I way... Think, I think this is something that Arena's doing very intelligently here, right? Because they're doing this Season of the Dragons thing uh, to kind of bridge the gap into the expansion. Everyone's getting a free amulet, right? Free legendary amulet. Nice. That means that's the hook. People get hooked on legendaries. They start going crazy. They start grinding it out. And that's the end game. Because you're absolutely right here, Zandri. People do get bamboozled. They go... What am I doing in this video game? What is my purpose here, right? Where are the number upgrades? Where's the big DPS? And they get lost, right? And don't understand what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, and I think legendaries, like shifting this towards legendaries in this subtle way with the armory, this new feature that they're adding, uh, and um, you know, bringing this to the forefront of people's minds and the player base's mind is very, very smart. I think Arena's very shrewd. I, I like the strategy on that. But go ahead, Inks. Um, oh, geez, I forgot what I was. Oh, somebody was saying that it's it's probably mostly TP barons. That's that's probably incorrect, because the point zero zero eight percent, um, which is well under eight thousand players, uh, um, and and that's if you're assuming there's a million Guild Wars two players, which there aren't. <laughs> uh, so certainly under eight thousand people at this point, it wouldn't really be TP barons because it's bound legendaries it's not i have 25 twilights in my inventory no it's how many are bound to your account not how many are sitting in your, in your inventory exactly well and if i could actually jump in on the transmutation charges <laughs> so i had a thousand at one point and then i ran out of them because i do fashion wars so much and then i used all my black lion statuettes to get more transmutation charges, and then I just started buying them. I could just swipe the credit card and buy them because, like, I do fashion wars so much that, like, I have to buy transmutation charges because I can't get them fast enough in game. And in game, they literally just fall out of the sky. Like, this is actually like massive for me because I can just fashion. Like, I would play fashion wars on the same character, like full, like nine transmutations changes like nine transmutation charges and then five minutes later i would change the look again because i hated it like <laughs> that's how like constant of a thing it is for me it's just i just do fashion like all day long because like dps and fashion are all i care about in this game i just want to look beautiful and do top dps <laughs> while i'm looking beautiful so you know that's that's how it goes so this is like this is like amazing for me this is hands other than literally other than the account wallet that they added back in like 2013 where all of your currency went into one place and you didn't have to deposit actual gold into the bank anymore. Like this is the best update that's for like me personally that's ever happened. It's amazing. Boom. I think like, I don't even know when it was implemented, but the, the best and worst thing for me is just, and it wasn't even me experiencing the update, but just that I can link my PayPal to everything. 
<laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> I don't even. I don't know if they started out with that or if they added that eventually. But it's like the best but worst thing that could possibly be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> they make it easy to swipe okay that there you go like, I, know. <laughs> I guess it shows how long it's been since i've bought anything from guild wars 2 because i didn't know that's a thing i literally like oh i don't know if i want to tell this story but i kind of want to tell this story but like i had to use that as like a strong arm barter with customer support the other day like oh my god <laughs> <What>? like <laughs> I'll just tell the story. Like, I'll just tell the story. So I have full runic armor and the cape and, like, the illuminated Boreal weapons because I do a lot of fucking strike missions. And I was buying my last piece for the medium armor. I was buying, like, the gloves and the chest piece. And I bought the heavy chest piece again on accident, which is, like... That's the most expensive one, I think, and it is a grind to get that. It's a lot. And so I emailed support, told them what was up, said, hey, guys, can you replace this? And then, like, they always ask you to delete it anyways. So I just salvaged the thing and got one mithril ore from it and, you know, whatever, just moved on. I told them that I salvaged it, and then they reply back to me. And they said, oh, we can't replace it because you salvaged it and you profited from it. And I'm like, hold on a second. We're talking about weeks of grinding that I already did that now I have to do again because I got a mithril ore. And they're like, yeah, sorry, we can't do it. So I was like, I just bought gems. I'm going to tell my bank to charge that shit back, replace the chess piece. So they replaced it real fast after that. <laughs> but like, I had to turn into a Karen. But like, I was only able to save my Raven chess piece because I bought <laughs> transmutation charges with gems. So legendary armory is like a big for me. Holy shit. This is the thing. This is this is gaming right here. Legendary armory. I'm not proud, but I had to do it. It was the only way. That is uh that is quite something. All right, then I have to say. Uh what a story. What a tale. And the, yeah, the, the look, don't look up how many gems you spent, guys. Just don't. Just, oh, I'm just, just I up. already know. I already Wait, did. How that. many? I was like, I'm going to have to use this if it doesn't go the right way. Like over the years, should I say this? Like, I don't know if I should say this. We'll just say that okay, literally I could have, I could have bought a new car. <laughs> Shut up. Like a new right? car, it could be $300 for a used junker. Or like, it could be like, it could oh, be okay. like, it, it could have been, it could have been like a Q50 Red Sport. Like brand new off the lot. Yeah, I, I wouldn't leave. But, I also, that's not to say, yeah, a yeah, couple yeah, of yeah. brand new computers, for sure. You could have bought a like, more And I don't mean cards. a couple, I mean like top of the line. I could yeah, buy yeah, another mining ring mining. for what I've spent yeah. in the years. Yeah, for sure. All the stuff being leaked. I could have bought another uh, mining rig. 11,500 yeah. on gems is about a third of what it was. Ixui. Wait. What? Speaking of that, do you have one of the 3080s that I could possibly have in your mining rig? That's what I want to know. Inks is destroying anyone's uh, hope of ever getting a new PC. Uh, Inks single-handedly is like mining buy. as many bitcoins as China. <laughs> You should buy the TI cards because they're low hash rates and miners don't want them. Yeah. Until I, they crack I, I them. Just, <laughs> I just got up from a 1650 or a 1050 TI to a 1650 Super because I, I couldn't afford all of the. Yeah, because Inks is buying all of them. He's anything. buying yeah, all of look, them. Look, I'll, I'll tell you, I will say this much. <laughs> I have no shame in saying that the people that I live around don't know how to fix their computers. So they just throw them out when they're broken. Oh, dude! Yeah, and dude. some oh. this is, this is and sometimes they're story. they're not broken that badly, so it's not uncommon for me to pull twenty sixties out of the trash, basically that have nothing oh, wrong geez. with them. And then I and then I turn that into profit because Man, that just reminds me about like back in the day when people would use their old like stuff that had Windows ninety eight on it. It would need more RAM, and they bought it brought it to like a software engineer to put more RAM in the PC. Nice. Yeah, that's a and classic. Download more of it. You just download more. Yeah, you just download it. Yeah. No, my, my current, and I, I make this joke a lot, my current PC is a garbage PC. I literally picked it out of the garbage uh, and replaced the motherboard because that's what the big problem was. It needs new RAM as well, but 
it works for now. Um, but yeah, hmm. I just picked it out of the garbage, fixed it up, cleaned it up, and I have a computer. A garbage PC. That's Inks awesome. A literal mining. garbage PC. <laughs> really how, awesome. how many GPUs do you have, Inks? Uh... Don't don't make me go bang my head against a wall, please. It's like seven, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's more than that. It's I, it's, it's, oh, it's I think it's over twenty actually, right? Um, I want to say twenty three. Oh. If you count if you count the laptop, but I don't mine off the laptop because that's just a poor business decision. Do you know how hard it was for me just to get this sixteen fifty is super. I mean, these uh, things aren't these things aren't necessarily free. I have okay. debt that I have to pay okay. off. Uh, but, that's fake. Yeah. Let me tell you, yeah, me too. Real fast, no, 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 no. This is easy, easy. Uh, this is like financial uh, advice from Brazil because I've oh. had like fan, like fans, lol, friends. I've had friends that have done this. Like, I have a friend who has four kids. Like, I'm 28. He's 28. He has four kids and a wife. So, like, you know, a homeboy's got some credit card debt with that. He's like, I got about 80 grand in credit card debt. And then I figured out that like the credit card companies just want you to pay some of it. Like they don't care. So he just quit paying his payments. And then they all started to call him all day long and harass him. And he's like, I can't pay it off. Sorry. He would just hang up on them. And after like three, four months of that happening, he's he literally like, he's like, I mean, I know I owe 20 grand on this credit card, but I can pay a thousand right now. And they're just like, okay, cool fine <laughs> and so you just settle it all and it's just like money in america is fake so like i don't know i don't know if that helps anybody but like it's fake the economy is fake it's all fake we're getting into like conspiracy theories of brazil yeah. but, like it's fake it's just fake it's, it doesn't matter that that a 3090 costs five thousand dollars like the money's fake who gives a fuck just uh buy it. yeah i'm not sure but, okay. yeah this, you know not this financial not part of the list of yeah. topics that yeah. i was given not <laughs> financial like advice not fi series. no one here is <laughs> a financial advisor no, it's, no one here is a, of, yeah, yeah do not buy brazil lawyer, coin do not buy not, it not a lawyer okay. not a lawyer not yeah. a financial advisor i don't work for a bank you yeah. know none, none of that shit anyways uh anyway uh <laughs> so there was what there there was one thing that actually uh was a little bit of bad news well oh well not not really bad news but i think it was news that certainly has has ruffled a few feathers and is going to be a bit of a, of a grind and i think we're going to start you'll, you'll really kind of get a feel for that as as time goes on we are going to have to wait until 2022 for the expansion and they say early so you know you're talking quarter one almost certainly there you talk you know january february march that sort of thing let's just say february right we're looking at a pretty long wait right now we have to wait uh you know kind of like six seven you know maybe even eight months uh to get all the way to the expansion uh and there's probably not going to be a lot of new content you know like people even kind of guessed that it would be this late because it, you know people looked at oh we've got 24 weeks worth of um returning content with the living world coming back wait hang on a minute how are we going to do that like how are we going to release in september because that's what people originally thought people originally thought that it was going to be released in around kind of that, that september region right you know, july announcement at the end of this month now boom and then expansion a few months later because this is kind of like arena nets this is what they have been doing actually historically right they, you know path of fire i think they didn't announce and they dropped it like three weeks later or something actually crazy like that. it was like yeah okay here's the expansion guys get ready right and go and play it but this time there's gonna be a bit more of a build-up and you know th this is a bit of an a, an interesting one to me because the Guild Wars 2 has had content droughts in the past but this one's gonna be pretty brutal right like it's gonna be eight months or so like seven eight months of absolutely nothing new coming into the game now arena is padding this out by adding new features like alliances are basically content it's going to completely change world versus world that's content right uh marionettes coming back but you do have the free living world stuff there is also there you have uh, dark decks 12 uh, sorry 11 not 12 uh update coming back and, and there are some other features that i'm sure they have planned like legendary armory so they are trying to introduce more features i'm very curious if they do more um as uh, as time goes on however i think it is going to be interesting to see how we end up actually surviving this and how the community is able to stay hyped i think arena really needs to be careful here with um keeping like a good tempo of releases going uh, and also exciting the player base with all the beta events otherwise i think this is going to be a pretty 
pretty brutal uh, wait here for a lot of players. And I'm, I was actually surprised at how well the announcement went. I, I think ArenaNet was very intelligent, like giving all the good news. Right? In fact, they, they went with like the bad news first. Like they, they gave the bad news, then they did the good news. Like they said, yeah, Xbox delayed, but you know what? We've got Colin, okay? He's going to smile you all the way to positivity um, across the board there. So I think they definitely delivered the news well. But I think, I think it's going to really set in like four months from now. I think you're going to see people like, oh my god, right? We're not there yet, right? Like, oh my goodness me, it's still not over. Um, but I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting stuff there as well. Pretty interesting. What do you guys think about the delay, uh, the community's I, reaction to it, and so on? I think it's so much better. Not even necessarily the community's reaction to it, but if you're looking at specifically competition right now, and I know a lot of people don't like to hear this because they're like, they're either, they either get mad if someone says they want content now, and they're like, ArenaNet takes time that's why they don't do things on a schedule it's ready when it's ready or um or they're not worried about competing with other stuff because the game is such a hybrid you don't have to worry about it but 9.2 from what blizzard uh blizzard has been talking about since 9.1 came out uh for world of warcraft recently would be coming out probably around september and the expansion for endwalker for 14 is also coming out around uh i forget the actual date but it's coming out this this fall and so the idea is, even if people are upset about a content drought and they drop off for now, obviously all of their content is saved. They could drop the game and come back whenever. And that's kind of the same thing for Final Fantasy XIV. So when the expansion is new, a lot of people just play the story. And so when Endwalker comes out, people will go through the whole story for 6.0. And then unless they raid or do fashion stuff, they won't have anything to do. And so by the time, like, not having the competition, not having to compete with Endwalker, by the time, uh, hopefully, if it is, like, a, you know, February release or a late January release, people that have done the MST and aren't raiding will come over to Guild Wars 2. So even if you're not looking at it from that standpoint, and you're like, oh, you know, there's a drought, whatever, or, you know, they could be making the game so much better, like, because we don't really know the actual status of what... The expansion is like we have no idea except for the stuff that they've been talking about that are going to hold us over until the expansion so i think that's really good especially coming from a population standpoint you know what i mean yeah Sorry, i'm excited no i, I think it's a good idea I, I, <laughs> from from a long-term standpoint i completely agree with that right you know the game's gonna be more polished hopefully finished right timing is better as well like you know undoubtedly undisputably it is better timing and that you know this has always been the guild wars 2 mo uh you know it's been you know what those other games okay ah they suck come play this game instead right so once people like play the initial game and people start falling off looking for a new experience then boom guild wars 2 waiting to like it's like a little bottom feeder like just going along the bottom of the ocean like eating all the players that just fall off right uh that is that is guild wars 2 <laughs> The Guild Wars 2 MMO equivalent of a fish, right? It's going around, eat, devouring all the leftover players, right? And that's what happens. And that is what, of course, will be very advantageous there. And hopefully the game is just, like, very, very well polished as well. Like, you know, this expansion, really, they got to knock it out of the park and make it something very, very special. If they don't, it's not going to be... It, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. And, yeah, there was a really bad content drought. Like, the, the, but the thing is, this was legendary. And, and this is something that players aren't necessarily... Um, used to as well like it, guild wars 2 is a bit different in that you do have like maybe not the biggest updates in the world but you do have things um you know you do have things getting added to the game you know every few months essentially uh so this will be one of the longer drafts but yeah the, the hot one was very unpopular before heart of thorns it was absolutely huge a huge content drought uh, and we're gonna be having something that is similar to that but i do think yeah. arena has a much better approach this time as i mentioned before by adding all these new features i'm very curious if they're gonna add more but the other thing is too, and you think about that, everybody says, it, or most people that I've talked to say that HOT is like prime for Guild Wars 2, right? And that had, you know, a, a backlog of content beforehand. Like, just saying. Exactly. History could repeat itself. Yeah. That was, I mean. Or even better. Because now it will be better. more refined. Here, here's the other thing too. <laughs> so you've got Final Fantasy 14 coming out in November, late November, mm -hmm. right? Um, ArenaNet kind and and this is not just ArenaNet, but a lot of dev companies, uh, a lot of game companies do this. A lot of companies in general do this. But about half of December, they're semi shut down, and half of January, they're semi shut down because people are traveling off for winter vacation, Christmas vacation, holidays, and so on. So this way, with it being launched at beginning of 2022, uh, the devs are fresh. 
the game has had more time to develop and polish. And so the launch should be hopefully a better experience overall. Yeah, I think that's the uh, that that's the ultimate goal here as well is to make it a, a very very polished and refined experience. Uh, hopefully, with a lot of actual content and maybe looking at resolving some of the issues within the game. You know, I, I think one thing that I really want to see uh, dealt with with the expansion is how it actually deals with new players coming into the game. Um, and I, I, actually, this is this is a great question uh, for, for Zandri once again. Actually, like, how, how do you feel about playing the core game before the expansions? Because in my opinion, I actually think this really puts people off. Maybe it hasn't put you off, but I think it actually does put people off because uh, you've probably noticed when you've got to Heart of Thorns and when you get to Path of Fire as well, the content is very different, right? Particularly when you're dealing with the end game. Like, and once you get to Fractals and Raids. There is a huge difference between dungeons and every other piece of endgame content out there, right? There's even a lot of difference in the way the open world meta events play out, right? Like the Heart of Thorns are much more kind of on rails, organized around like big meta events, like huge bosses, right? Path of Fire is very much exploration driven and stuff like that. Core being a little bit of a mix of both, but it is dated and it does show. And I think a lot of people kind of get lost a little bit in core because the content hasn't been... It's not really up to date with the way Arena designs their content now uh, in the living world and, of course, the expansions. And I, I really want to see... Well, this will be my opinion. Anyway. I, I think they should just have like a new starter area, right? Like Kind of a, a lot of them... Like, WoW does this, right? Like, WoW, you go you go to, you know, Exile's Reach or whatever and go, oh, yes, you know, you just go here and then go to the end game, right? Because I feel like once you've got this many expansions, right, we've got Core Game, we've got HOT, we've got Living Story, and we've got Path of Fire, then we've got more Living Story, then we've got Ice Brood Saga. That's so much content that you have to kind of get through before you can actually get to the thing that you saw the trailer for. I don't know. Like, I, I just don't think that really works with all the Zoomers about the place, right? All the Zoomers are going to not play the game instead. I guess you can technically level 80 boost, but level 80 sure. boost, it plants you down in Silver Waste, in Heart of Thorns. It doesn't actually take you to the even the most recent content. And I don't know. I view that as a problem, but I'd be curious to see what your take on that is, actually. I actually think, in my opinion, I think it's better done in Guild Wars 2. Um, I actually really disliked when they made the change for World of Warcraft and having you start out there um, at Exile's Reach because there is, when you actually create characters, there's a lot of lore that you get in the starting areas that you would miss out unless you actually read the lore novels. And so what a lot of people say and they complain about is, well, there's no lore in game. Well, yeah, there would be if you didn't dungeon grind and race to max level and or start out in the new areas. And I mean, I know they have the stat squish and they made it so that you can be whatever level you want to test out new areas, but but still. Um, and then for Final Fantasy XIV, uh, I actually think it would be better implemented there because for fourteen, for you to get to end game unless you boost is... Like, and this is just like me being completely like astronomical with it, but it's a ridiculous amount of hours. It's like 5,000 hours of MSQ. And you cannot get to certain portions of Endgame or unlock certain dungeons unless you do MSQ. And it's a lot of cutscenes. People were talking about it being like 100 hours of cutscenes just in A Realm Reborn, which is the base game. And I think that Guild Wars 2 actually does it really well. Like I know a lot of people have been playing for a really long time, and so for them, going back to Corteria is so different because the gameplay is really different. You know, they still have the hearts. There aren't, um, like in HOT, you mainly just have like the events, the meta events, and all of the exploration there. But I liked it because I wanted to explore everywhere. The hearts were a different way to level. I was taking my time and I was doing the dungeons as they came out. And I actually liked that the tutorial wasn't in your face either. So for me, having, you know, the story at every 10 levels, if you even chose to do it, was fantastic and it felt a lot faster um yeah and they did squish the msq like someone was saying uh in 14 for arr but it's still really ridiculous and with the amount of tomes of knowledge and things that they give for you as well you don't necessarily have to stay in Corteria for a really long time like you could just use all of those tomes of knowledge and level up very quickly especially since you can level up with anything, crafting, gathering, pvp, like you could realistically not even hang out in Corteria on the map at all. I know people who are max level who didn't even boost, that didn't even do like the core story. So it just... They're not missing it, out, by the way. <laughs> I liked it. I actually liked it, but it's me. I, I, but I'm also the person who read every single book originally in the Priory, and I'm going to back to read every single book in the archives in the Priory as well. 
Well, then it's really confusing that you like like the story if you like read the little lore that was actually good. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> I liked to, it. Uh, I, I it please feel free to to play how you want. That's what Guild Wars Two's <laughs> model is. Right, exactly. This, this, yeah, playing how you want. And then, like, I love too that it's a step up in difficulty in Heart of Thorns as well, or at least it's supposed to be for Living World Season Two in Heart of Thorns. And for me, coming from other MMOs, it makes a lot of sense, especially when you're able to actually read your tool tips and learn combat. And that's what's unfortunate about people that want to skip all of that if they don't like true uh, core Tyria and they don't like the new player experience. If you decide to boost, you don't know how to play your shit, so you're kind of going to suck and you're going to die a ton in Heart of Thorns. Like, that's really unfortunate. But hey, that's how some people play the game, right? And if that, you know, that's the way you yeah. want to play, that's how you want to play. That, that, that certainly uh, does happen. <laughs> that certainly does uh, happen. <laughs> I, mm, I have some thoughts on that. I... There's some value in, like, getting to level 80, I guess, and not just boosting. I just don't know that, like, you really gain anything useful from just, like, leveling up. You, like, learn, like, there are people that, like, just don't even, like, they don't read skills the whole way. Like, they have, like, thousands of hours on a class, and they don't, like, they don't, like, they don't know that, like, Grace of the Land is 10 targets. And they're like, I've been a druid main since Heart of Thorns. Uh, I had an experience with that in a raid group the other day. The guy was a tyrant elitist, and he thought druid healed five people, or ten people, but it's five. But Grace of the Land, or like Spot or whatever, is ten. Like, it was just like, LOL. Like, I don't know. There's, I don't know that... They just need another new player experience. They need a new player experience that doesn't send level 15 players into Frostgord Sound. They need a new player experience that doesn't just keep you at one HP in the tutorial. Like they need, they need to actually like teach people to do shit. Wait, like, are you talking about one HP for the glint fight that it doesn't tell you how to do it? You had to actually learn it. If you get hit once, you die. Is that what you're referring no, to? No, no, no. The literal, oh. like the starting zones, like the Queensdale oh, okay. or the Elemental, like uh, Char, where you go do the Ascalon Ghosts. You literally cannot die in those. You will go to one HP and you will just stay there. Sure. And so it's just like, this isn't teaching anybody how to do anything. This is teaching them that they can just run around and they'll be fine. And that's what everyone does anyways. Because you go look at the DPS meter on Octavine and you can press three buttons on Dragon Hunter and beat everyone. Like, ooh, there is... <laughs> but is that a problem? I don't, like, for, I don't... For open I don't, world? I don't know that it is because, like, I don't even think that, like, knowing how to play Guild Wars 2 on any level even matters. Like, I totally see that there's value it matters i, I guess it matters, it matters a little bit if you yeah. want to do if you want to do raids like raids like, or maybe nightmare fractal if you want to do like cm fractals like maybe even t probably honestly not even t4s like t4 fractals is getting carried by a heel brand like that's all it is <laughs> like if you want to do like cm fractals or if you want to do like raids like that's like you have to learn a lot to be able to do that. And, like, there's nowhere that teaches you to do that in Guild Wars 2, like, at all. Like, you have no, to, like, but you have to go to you YouTube. Level up, you learn yeah. how to dodge out of things, defiance bars, things like that, how to break them, even though the game doesn't explicitly tell you. And with new players coming to the game, if you're playing things like PvP, everybody's like, the combat is so amazing, you have to play PvP. You want somebody who doesn't know how to play their class to, like, play PvP. Because I would rather have somebody figure it out the whole way up, figure out what makes fire. sense for them, and then also be able to counter other people's attacks. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't I... want somebody on my team who doesn't know how to play the game. And if like Ooh, playing all the way, don't play rank then. <laughs> I probably, exactly. Like I'm, I, I, like I'm not like whenever I like giggle at stuff. Like I promise it's not me laughing at you or anything. Like I'm, I'm really not. Like no, it's me talking. laughing. <laughs> it's it, because you're reminding me of experiences that I've had, and it's just like. Every PvP game, like, someone on the team is trying to sabotage you, whether they know it or not. <laughs> they may not know it. They may not know that they're literally just sabotaging you. But, like, without a doubt, they are. Like, you have Every that Every game I play. <laughs> like, you have the thief that's playing Shadow Refuge and camps on home the whole, day, the whole game. You have the thief that goes far and loses every single fight. That's all I do. Like, there are a million examples. So you have the druid that doesn't know what Celestial Avatar is. And then you have people that are just gods... And, like, they became gods because, like, like, I don't even, like, they just, like, 
they paid attention on a level that like I don't think the game could have taught them. I like there's leveling up like uh, this is such a hard one for me because like I think about so much stuff on both sides of it and it's just from like being the salty asshole for so long. But like there's totally value in what you're saying. And I think like you're making a really good point. And like I'm not even necessarily saying that I'm right. You, it's entirely possible that you're actually the right one here. It's just that, like, my thoughts on this stuff have changed over time. And I think your points are really great. It's just, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, like, maybe I'm just mean. Maybe that's what it is. I don't well, know. I don't I know. Mean, I don't know. I think a lot of the issue is that people don't read, like you were saying. So I yeah, guess for yeah, me, yeah. it would True. be hard. It's like, how do you implement a really good new player experience? Like, how do you revamp Corteria? How do you teach people how to play the game if people don't want to, like, read the boxes that pop up now? You know what I mean? Like, I completely, I agree. I, I agree with pretty much what everyone has said. Like, I think there's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that there are always going to be players who, yeah, you're not going to end up being a top player by what the game shows you. You're going to have to actually figure it out, right? And, well, and you know this more than most Brazil, right? People break out those spreadsheets and they learn literally everything. They break out the spreadsheets and fake math, of course, uh, to find out the truth um, with this stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, I that's... just feel like for most players, it just isn't important. It doesn't matter. No, no, of course. And the the goal for most players is not to be like an Omega player. It's just to be casual, right? Just to, just, just right. to be able to experience the game, right? Like the baseline is you need to be able to access the game. And I actually, you know, I, you know, I, I am actually in contact with, with, with Xander here because I, you know, I have, this is a story that I had actually. I was, I was doing some map completion for a legendary and I, I, I was just going around Auric base and map completing. And I see this guy hard raging in map chat that ArenaNet is a terrible developer, you know, this game is bullshit, the mechanics are horrible, terrible video game, and it was because he just was not able to do the Balthazar hero, which is it, hero point challenge, which to be fair is one of the more challenging ones that has a bit of a weird mechanic. Basically, there's a, mecha there's a thing that happens when the, when the, the mob when the boss gets to 50% hit points, it does like this big one-shot attack that you have to bounce on a mushroom to escape. And he was unable to grasp this. He, he didn't realize this is what he had to do. So he just thought it was like literally impossible or bugged or something like that. And I kind of like went over to him and said, you know, hey, don't worry about it. Like, you know, I, I did the hero point for him, right? And said, hey, look, there you go. It wasn't so bad, right? And he was like, dude, how was I supposed to know that? How was I supposed to know about that mushroom, man? Okay, that mushroom was hidden from me. Right? And then I kept playing with this guy for a little uh... bit and doing map completion. <laughs> and, and he was... Was, he was mad that he had to like that the, the game wasn't like telling him exactly where to go to get to the hero point. It's like how was I supposed no. to ever figure this out, Come right? On. How? Do, no, this is true. Seriously, it's actually true. I, you know, this this happenings. You no, no, I believe you. Story. But but just going I, I no, I, I totally believe everything that you're saying about the story. It's just I people like that. Do they they think that they want their hand held through the entire experience? But the truth is, you don't want that because if you did, you would oh, quit the game. You think you or do, you but you don't. Move on to another game. Yeah. yeah, you would move on from the game way faster than maybe you already are going to, if your hand is held through every step of the game. I, I like. See, oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I can see what you're saying to you. Um, just like doing explorable modes, which is funny because people are like, you know. The issue is she doesn't know what she doesn't know. But I was doing the Etherblade Explorable yesterday, and there's actually this room that you go into that fills with electricity, and you have ah, to have people stand on these platforms classic. and bring this, you know, guy over yeah. to the control panel, right? So I'm hitting the control panel because I didn't know we had to bring a guy over, but it's kind of like trial and error. Does it tell you no? But for me, if I was in Discord with someone and I'd be like, what, like, you know, I think we should try this because nobody remembered. And then it made sense, all of the trial and error. And speaking of when I was talking about like defiance bars, no, the game doesn't outwardly teach you those. But if you're attacking somebody and you go in with your ride, the lightning, you actually get like what would have been a stun off, disengage back, go back in and do your knockdowns and you see the defiance bar going down. It's not hard to realize, oh, hey, this is how I do it. So oh, I think there uh... are things that the game doesn't do like putting your face outwardly. And for me and the player base that I am, uh, or, you know, the portion that I am is literally kind of like, okay, this is 
how I should do it. Like, I actually think it's fun <laughs> learning this way. But again, that's not everybody. Uh, you so know, maybe like for other new players, it might not help them with things not in your face. But then other people would complain that it was too easy. I wish everyone was like that. Do you, do you... <laughs> Okay, so the Define Smile one is such a great example here, uh, 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 Zandri, because this has been a historical thing that players have not grasped since the introduction of Define Smiles. So much so that Arena actually, like, giga power crept um, some masteries. You know how, you know, once you once you get to the Ice Brood Saga, yeah, there there are a few masteries that just do massive break bar damage to certain bosses, mm -hmm. and this was because without them, before these were introduced, players simply ignored break bars and never broke them ever, pretty much. And now that you I have masteries to do it, about people buying rocks. So on top of having oh, those masteries, yeah. people <laughs> would buy rocks yeah. to get people's, yeah. like because I was doing uh, what was it? Um, <laughs> Mouth of Zaitam, and I like just saw rocks, and I'm like, well, obviously <laughs> these have to be used, right? So maybe it is because I actually pay attention, but I'm like, I'm gonna pick up these freaking rocks, I'm gonna throw them at the boss, like they're here <laughs> for a reason, right? So it might not sound absolutely intuitive, but like if you're not paying attention to the surrounding, like I don't know. Yeah. Would you like to know the full story behind consumables like that? Well, tell I, us the I full would, story. Actually, this I is actually, actually this it. perfectly supplements the point you just made. Because people only found out of them by leveling up nor like the normal way and going and doing heart quests and playing the games and like looking through all of the vendor items. That's the only way anyone knew about any of this stuff. Like they found it that way and no one ever would have figured it out if everybody just boosted characters. Um, so like the first thing was a script bottle that you bought from an NPC in Scritzburg and it did a ah, flat 10% yes. of the max HP of an enemy. So you could literally buy 10 script bottles in one shot anything as fast as you could just press the number one key. Like, so bad, it was but nuts. at the same time, that's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were, there were harpy feathers, and harpy feathers were just a consumable. They gave you like 10 seconds of stealth or something. So you could take them in dungeons, and you could just perma stealth on every class and just run through. And then those got disabled because Anet figured out about that. And then people found the like age, the like whispers agent stealth kits or whatever they're called. Then people found rocks. Then people found like wooden planks. People found out that on Lupicus you could spawn like the rock dogs and shit, and he would dump more AOEs into the same area, and you could one shot him with feedback. Like people found all this stuff, and like this is why you can't use consumables and raids other than like food. Like, they just blacklisted everything other than food. Because, like, people found all this shit that they put in the game that people found by leveling up with hard quests. So, that's kind of the, the consumable story. That's fantastic. Good on them, though. I mean, all, unless it was something that they would, like, get stripped of achievements or titles for. But still, like, there are people who literally seek out how to, like, necessarily break the game, but break the game like that is fantastic. I love hearing people, stories like that. People didn't get stripped of titles for some of the stuff but like the uh raid wing four challenge modes so uh, there was an exploit where you could have someone pull up the dialogue for the challenge mode to turn it on they could just die but the dialogue would stay open like the dialogue window and when the boss was at one percent you could turn the challenge mode on and kill it <laughs> and then you would get the cm like credit for it you would get the achievement um <laughs> And so literally, like, everybody had the title, like, within three days, like, the, the CM achievement title. So they added a new title called The Real Raiders of Tyria after they fixed the bug. So you had to do the CMs again, and there's, like, a significantly less percentage of people that have the second title than the first. <laughs> the first one should have an asterisk. The yeah, real. exactly. That's so fantastic. It was just, like, uh, there was um, back in... I can't remember the actual name of it. I'm blanking out. But you, there was this boss back in WoW where people would use this monk and you could have a statue that would have aggro. And it was supposed to be like this ad that would come out. You were supposed to taunt it with your other tank and bring it to the other side of the room. And they were able to just use these, like, uh, these ox statues. And even though it was a class ability, WoW was so upset. And I believe it was like a Russian group that did it. They stripped them of their title when they were, even though they were first on the boss. But it just reminds me of that. Anyway, sorry to go off on a tangent, but. Yeah, oh, that, no worries. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a bit of a weird one, right? Like, I, I think WoW 
I, I well, it's a bit different in WoW because the world's first stuff is a lot more serious. Here in Guild Wars 2 land, world's first is a bit of a meme, right? Because it takes like, ah, you know, like three hours, we'll have it done. The only like real world's first race there was was for, um, for Wing 5 Hall of Chains, which is, took, uh, took a good amount of time to actually take it down to actually get the challenge modes. But everything else has been done fairly, fairly quickly. Um, so I guess it's a little bit less serious in this game, but I uh, don't uh, know. Yeah, that, it's, it's kind of fun stuff. It is some fun gaming indeed with that. Uh, so I guess that kind of wraps up that topic with regards um, to the delay and stuff. So there, there is one thing actually. And you know what? I, I, oh, right, this, this is probably one of the hottest topics about not just Guild Wars 2 within the community, but Guild Wars 2 out of the community. And that's the performance issues, right? So Guild Wars 2, it's a game. Maybe it doesn't run so well, okay? Not not all the time, anyway. Sometimes you get a little bit of lag, a little bit of low FPS about the place here. And this is something that I actually thought, look, I'll admit this, guys, okay? I'll admit this. I never thought they would actually do this, um, but they have. They are updating the engine uh, a little bit. They are moving from DirectX 9, which was the renderer that's been used for Guild Wars 2 ever since Guild Wars 1, in fact. Uh, for those who don't know, Guild Wars 2 is basically built on top of Guild Wars 1 2, and it's a heavily modified version of Guild Wars 1 is how Guild Wars 2 actually runs. And coming very soon, I imagine, is actually going to be DirectX 11 with hopefully a little bit more performance optimization uh, on the menu here. This this is this might well be one of the most requested things ever. Like I or I like every single day, like I get spam with this. Like teapot game doesn't run well. When are they upgrading it? Teapot, I've got 20 FPS. Game doesn't <laughs> run well. Well, yeah, dude. Okay, like <laughs> it's an old, it's a pretty old <laughs> game with a lot of stuff going on now. Right. I'm just going to bring down the hammer, guys. I'm going to bring down the hammer. I, I actually think that people are kind of overhyping this a little bit. I do think it will help, but I am not entirely sure if it will help as much as a lot of people think. Like, regardless of, uh, of, of how much extra optimization they can do with this, and even graphical updates they talk about here, right? Let's talk about this, guys. Okay? Like... The game has still got a lot going on. It's about a million character models, a squillion effects, right? And there's, you know, the, the game's quite pretty as well with all that. I'm just going to say, guys, like the game is probably going to lag afterwards as well. Like you might get a bit of, they They even actually say this in the post, by the way. They even say that for some users, they won't notice a difference whatsoever. They've, they've kind of already preemptively stated this. Now, I think it will definitely help. Um, but the, the game currently chugs pretty bad, right? Like, the game will go down to, like, 30 FPS, 40 FPS sometimes. In the era of PC Master Race and high refresh rates, this does not please people. People are not happy about that. Understandably so, by the way. Um, you know, like, playing at low FPS, not good. But I will say this, guys, okay? Temper your expectations, because it might not actually be as good as you might think. Although, I think it will help. Right, it will definitely help. I would love to see consistent 60 everywhere. Uh, that would be very nice uh, if that was possible. Um, but I think it's certainly something that the community is going to be very, very happy about. Um, the, the, you know, this is a, a long-awaited thing. And actually, kind of as a secondary thing there, we you can kind of, you know, uh, talk about the actual upgrade itself. The, I think the real important thing that maybe is even being slapped on here a little bit is actually that the fact that they're doing this heavily implies that Guild Wars 2 is going to be very much on the menu for a long time. So Guild Wars 2, you know, people were saying Guild Wars 2 EOD, ooh, end of dragons, more like end of development. Ooh, got him, right? Which to be fair is not entirely unreasonable given the current position of the game. But I think that the fact that they're actually updating the engine and looking to make structural changes to improve the game, even improving the graphics, the optimization, this to me heavily implies, right, um, that we are actually looking at at least an, one more expansion after end of dragons maybe even more and yeah i think this says that yeah this is we're not looking at guild wars 3 it's rip guild wars 3 we're looking at guild wars 2.5 which is a very interesting prospect i think i would love that i like i don't want to get legendary armor legendary armory in a new game like i would love to just play guild wars 2 forever and there are people that like literally play guild wars 1 forever like, you can log in to pre-searing Ascalon and just see level 20 standing around talking to each other in chat. And, like, there's nothing to do in the tutorial because people just want to play that game forever. 
And like, I kind of feel that way about Guild Wars 2. I don't want to get invested in another MMO. Um, also, like, this was brought up in chat too, but like, it's by someone else. Like, this is just like real facts. Like, Inks has 23 graphics cards, and he. <laughs> He could not play Guild Wars 2 at 60 FPS with 23 <laughs> graphics cards. Like, no, not going to happen. Like, I have a 9900K no, and a 1080, 40 FPS tops. Like, <laughs> if if I don't run the D912 proxy, like a couple other people have said this, if I don't play that, like, I want to use meter.dll. I want to oh. melee char helicopters. Oh. <laughs> But unfortunately, I can't do that because I have to use the the DirectX proxy to play at a playable frame rate. Like that's how I get. That's how I manage to get forty five FPS. I can get forty five FPS because I'm using a third party add on that like enables that. Like without that, it's like twenty five to thirty. Like it's it's no. It's like it's not good. It's it's really rough. Yes, indeed it is. And this is certainly a big complaint so, for a lot of uh, a lot of people. But yeah, go ahead, Inks. DX11. Uh, so there's a lot of complaints about why not DX12? Why not Vulcan? Why not DX12 Ultimate? And yes, DX12 Ultimate is a thing, by the way. Um, I, I think the biggest thing is money and time. But the other important thing, and 7-Bit Brian brought this up, is that going from 9 to 11 is going to provide a better consistency overall where the highs and lows the swings shouldn't be as drastic as they are now the other thing to consider is that uh dx12 is mainly a windows 10 plus thing and do you know what the most popular graphics card is on steam which is a much bigger platform than guild wars 2 gtx 680 a 1060 in 2021 the most popular gpu that steam users use is a 1060 so a lot of people are playing on uh, a little bit more dated hardware and so while dx12 would be nice and hopefully eventually we get there this is laying the groundwork for a more consistent experience for those people who are playing on either dated or older hardware Exactly, and and this is where things kind of get a little bit more interesting, right? Because basically, what um what DX11 is going to do is you, there are various images that demonstrate this, right? You know, kind of that you can see, you know, like you have this like one kind of source of water, right? And then it gets funneled into four different things. Oh yeah, now we can multi-thread, hooray! We can you know get some good parallelization going on um, with this stuff. The trouble is that if you don't have the hardware to accommodate that, right? then it doesn't really do anything. So I, I think a lot of people are getting very happy. Oh, yes, finally, I can get 60 FPS on my MacBook Pro from 2011. Hmm, yeah, not sure about that one, Chief. Like, that's probably not going to happen. Like, yeah, sure. Like, if you've got a decent machine and, and you know, that like, you know, you can still get some good performance out of that. Um, I think it will benefit a lot of the kind of medium to higher end users of the game. But I think a lot of people are in for a bit of a shock, right? And this, this is actually true, guys. Seriously, this is true. When... um. Uh, when Nico used to raid with us, uh, he actually played at three FPS. He he actually he did he did multiple like world's first races with us, uh, and he was actually playing the game. You can see it right here, guys. He was on uh, three frames per second the entire time. It's a little bit tragic right there, but you know, yeah, you know, that's. I don't think DX11 is going to fix that one. That one, uh, that one can't fix. That's not going to be good enough. There. <laughs> Actual PowerPoint. The, the, right the there. big news. The idea that the, they're actually listening to people about that will make it so that they do eventually upgrade everything and make it so that it's more performance oriented, kind of like 14, which you could play on a really crappy laptop if you wanted to, even though they have DX11 available and you can also turn it off if necessary to be able to play the game. So, I mean, I, I think that regardless of if it fixes the game, it shows that they're actually listening and that it could possibly be fixed in the future because, like you said, now it's there is a future. And maybe someone in my chat had actually mentioned it while I was waiting until you were done. That means that they could possibly eventually also implement DX12. And also that, like you said, the game is going to be Guild Wars 2.5. So if that's the case, possibly another expansion, as long as this one doesn't flop, which a lot of people think it will be, like end of development, and then that's when DX12 will be implemented and possibly with the new people we have. Mm -hmm. We have on staff, sorry, I'm getting over a cold. Um, that could help with that as well and keep everything focused. Exactly. That is indeed exactly the case. And that's 
the big thing that is going to be important um, moving forwards there for Arena Net 2 there as well. Getting the focus, getting the energy. Right, pushing the game forwards there as well. Uh, with and Dark Death 11 is certainly like, I think it like, with, with with all these things, these are big headliner things, right? And and to be honest, I was expecting a lot of this would come with the expansion, and and that's kind of like you know we can even talk about the Steam release in this regard. But now I kind of move to the the, the sort of the final topic, as it were, uh, which is in fact the announcement. There's going to be like a, a an official reveal thingy right at the end of July on the twenty seventh, uh, and. They've said they haven't, you know, they haven't said exactly what they're going to be talking about just yet. But they did give us a bit of a tease of potentially a mesmer, elite specialization. You know, there's a lot of argument whether it's a dagger or a spear in that one. I'm uh, from dagger. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> right when what, I yeah, started yeah. playing, I wanted dagger mesmer, and I saw it and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a that's a bit of an interesting one there as well. Yeah, new Funko Pops will also be revealed. But you know. This is something that Brian said in chat as well, and I completely agree with this, actually, is that they, they've got some balls to drop stuff like Legendary Armory, um, Alliances, Engine Upgrade outside of the expansion, right? Because obviously when you're making an expansion, you want to have these big, yeah, this, the game is changing, the features are getting slammed, like, here we go, loads of new stuff for you guys to enjoy, and... I, I don't know. I don't want to overhype it. I don't want to overhype it a little too much here, guys. But I am very curious with what they're actually going to drop on the 27th. Because they said they're going to talk about features, maybe some elite spec stuff, right? Showing world events, meta events, maybe, or something like that. We don't really know what they mean by that just yet. Event design is what they said. I think was the exact word wording there as well. I am very curious what they're going to actually drop on us um, on, the, uh, on the 27th because of just how ballsy i think it is to actually drop these pretty huge features now t to be clear here guys right you know i, I you know i want to i want to really underline this in my opinion um dx11 is a massive feature legendary armory is is a bigger feature than a lot of people are giving it credit for like legendary armory is a mega feature in my opinion that well I mean, I'm going to be highlighting it as much as I can because I really think it is a game changer for playing Guild Wars 2. And certainly if you're into the kind of these big endgame goals, Armory is huge, absolutely huge. Uh, and then finally, we also have Alliances. And Alliances, again, this is going to completely rework one of the three game modes in Guild Wars 2. Right? We have PvE, PvP, and World vs. World. I guess you could kind of say four game modes because open world PvE, instance PvE, then PvP and World Sword. But you get the idea, right? This is going to completely rework um, this game mode and probably restructure rewards, how it works, like, you know, the way people look at it, like this massive fresh campaign. That's dropping outside of the expansion schedule. This tells me, right, they got something special. They've got some big bombs to drop on us on that July 27th there as well. I'm very curious to see what they do. What do you guys think? Am I being overly optimistic there? What do you guys think they're going to... they got some big stuff they're going to smash us with and hype up Guild Wars 2. I think they wouldn't have talked about it so much if they weren't, like, super hyped about it. But at the same time, uh, I talked with you about the hot take stuff and a lot of people are overhyped for Ashes of Creation because features of that they're expecting. And when people were doing the alpha testing, they didn't see those features as much. And so I think that that's unfortunate. And so I don't want to overhype it as well and try to get like all of these new people in and be like, yeah, you can expect this, that, and the other thing. And then have them be like, well, it wasn't as great. But if they're having a whole stream dedicated to it, I would hope they have a lot. And I would just love to see like an extension of that trailer. An actual trailer would be absolutely Awesome. I know it's going to be spoiler heavy, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm not sure how spoiler heavy it will be, actually, um, mm -hmm. to, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, so go ahead, Ings. So I, I think even the last tea time that we did, I think I was pretty negative on the 27th. No, you are You're always cheerful. I'm always a cheerful guy. I know. Thanks, Brazil. <laughs> Preston, whatever the fuck your name is now. Well, um, it's, it's Brazil <laughs> Preston. <laughs> Um, I, I would say that I was I was pretty negative and pretty unhyped about or unexcited about um, End of Dragons and what that was going to bring on the 27th and so forth. But with everything that's been happening in the last month or so, with the constant releases on Tuesdays, with the marionette that's coming out soon, who now no longer has boobs or booty, um, <laughs> with the legendary armory, with, with the return of... 
with the yeah, return of Colin and Grouch. I have more booty than the fucking marionette. Jeez. I definitely, I definitely have more <laughs> than like marionette. I'd like to say I do, but... <laughs> but uh, <laughs> with, with all this news recently and, and the way that they're handling themselves, I'm extremely excited for the 27th now. I'm extremely hyped. And yeah, okay, I'm probably setting myself up for a little bit of disappointment, but... That's okay. I can handle it. I've, I've been playing this game since it's launched. I can handle a little bit of disappointment, uh, a little bit of blow to my ego. We're used to it. My hype. Yeah, I'm used to it. So, uh, But I still think it's going to be great on the 27th. And I think Arena has big plans, and not just for the 27th, but going forward from that with beta weekends and so forth. Yeah. Testing out elite, elite specialization. I'm a I big fan to. of this. Like this, this again, and, and to go bring it all the way full circle to kind of the paradigm shift with arena net here uh this is something that we have you know this is going to be a big build up right they're going to use the this the you know the time between now and the expansion to build this up right uh and to really get some hype going multiple they've even said that there's going to be multiple live streams about this stuff you know multiple beta test weekends right? I know this is this is great right and of course they can still use stuff uh, like the legendary armory the living world stuff there as well that they're releasing they're doing stuff like tournament of legends like bonus weeks like world vs world bonus weeks pvp bonus weeks special tournaments all that kind of stuff i think they've i think i i've got to say like, you know this is this is so weird for a tea time if you know tea time historically like i i can honestly say right here is the here's like the headline of this tea time i can genuinely say this might actually be one of this might be the time where the future of Guild Wars 2 has looked the brightest, actually, out of all time. And I'm actually serious there. I feel like a yes. lot of stuff in Guild Wars 2 has been kind of like, oh, we don't really know, or kind of downhill, or at least a bit of a bit of a decline over time, like a slow, like sinking into the quicksand of irrelevancy at the bottom of the MMO dump, right? Um, but this actually looks huge right this looks like a massive upswing for the game right like everything is coming together this, this is it like this is a reading next moment right to do this right like the game has had a very fraught and difficult development cycle but this is it like this is literally um uh the moment right this is the moment uh, that Arena has been waiting for to kind of take back the spotlight and kind of get their game back where it should be i you know, I'm very high. No, there's no curse there, guys. Right? There's no curse. L listen, I I'm not cursing ArenaNet. That's not what this is. ArenaNet is not cursed. Right? They will deliver. 2022 is the year of Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Boom. I mean, it kind of has to be, right? I mean, with the posts that people have had on Reddit and with the way people have been talking on Twitter, is it, it kind of has to be or else they're going to continue to lose face. So, like... It kind of better be. Like, I'm hoping that it is as hype as they say because it kind of has to be, right? I don't know. You're not wrong. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I share a very similar sentiment on this. If it, this, I think everyone is very aware, of, and this is why there is this level of nervousness around the expansion. Because I, look, mm -hmm. again, I don't want to be overly dramatic here, but I think you're right. Um, This is the last chance. It is now or never. If this flops, then... It's not over, but that might be like the last chance to really get some stuff done, right? You know, this this is this is the Realm Reborn moment, right, for Guild Wars 2, right? This is the moment where the game is going to potentially make its actual grand re-entrance into the scene. Um, and if it doesn't do that with EOD, ah, then, you know, like, we, it's probably going to stay that way. I, I mean, I oh, don't know. I would have said, people, the thing is, though, you know what? With MMOs, I actually don't think so. I think there's always time for a recovery. I mean, dude, look, if old school RuneScape can make its recovery and come back, then, I don't know, you, you can have, like, a few flop expansions or, like, a bit of a disaster, and it will still work, right? So, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, like, yeah. Because everything else for retail is kind of yeah. until like the Endwalker stuff been like yeah. kind of shit. I mean, <laughs> honestly. Oh, man. not false. But I, I think it can <laughs> still recover even if this one doesn't go well. But I, you know, I, I think you are right though. Like if this isn't like a big thing, then we're kind of like, oh, we sleep. We go back to sleep for another few years and you can set an alarm for then, right? Um, I suppose. But yeah, like that's it. This had better be good, right? But, right, Raina? It better be good. Like, you know, I'm saying 2022 year of Guild Wars 2. Look, I've said it every year since like 2017. Uh, so listen, you guys have better not let me down this time. Uh, or I will fully unchain Brazil and he will release part <laughs> five of the legendary armor roast video series. Honestly, like, uh, 
maybe you said this when I went to check the door, but like they've got one shot, they have one chance. Like this is it. Like we're 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 about to walk into the job interview. Like we're about to walk out the door. We're going onto the car lot to buy our first car. Like this is the big thing. Like this is it. If they if they mess up the expansion after like promising all this, like not good. No way, no, not good, not good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know if I added any good. value by saying that, but I just, you know, I just wanted to make it clear that's how I thought. I value all your contributions, Brazil. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> My value of my contributions is more than your value of my contributions. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, indeed. It doesn't matter to me, you know. It, this is actually kind of true, though, as well. Like, I, I know that um, when we're talking about this stuff, obviously... We have a, a a different perspective as content creators, right? We can see we can see everyone everyone's favorite <laughs> mesmer player uh, ranting the old the old man. Okay, like yeah, you know, take you know, take a seat, health, right? You know, don't worry, we'll get you a nice you know a nice mashed apple to eat over there. You know, the old folks home. But yeah, you know, it, it is certainly true that we're stuck here anyway, guys. I think once you do play Guild Wars two, you are going to be inclined to stick around for a pretty long time uh, here as well. Uh, and you know, I don't think it's like the end of the world. I kind of want to you know. I, we are we are saying that yeah this is like the big moment but i want to be very specific what we actually mean by this like when we when we say this right we mean this is the chance for the game to actually kind of get out there because look you know it's no secret guys guild wars 2 it's omega lol right okay guild wars if you if you mention guild wars 2 to someone who plays wow they're gonna say like this is a ter terrible game that you just dress up and do nothing right like this is guild wars 2's moment to get back out there it's not gonna like die like, the game is not going to just, like, straight up die if the expansion doesn't, like, blow up and explode. And the game doesn't even need to do that, right? Like, I enjoy the game as it is right now, and I'll probably enjoy the game even when there's not much content being released. Uh, I think we can entertain ourselves for a little while there. Uh, but, you know, we, you know, we, we obviously do have a, a different perspective as players who really want to see the game push to that next level and want to see that the game reach its true potential. But let me, you know what, guys? Let me tell you some advice for personal experience, okay? Do not do not assume that the game will become you know will, will get to its potential appreciate the game for what it is right and when the expansion comes out do the same do not try to like fit your version of what the game should be um over what it actually is and compare those two things it will drive you insane and before you know it uh you're playing wow classic for like 24 hours a day you've lost your voice and you're dying to a troll in stranglethorn Vale, or maybe level seven crab right these are all things that can happen to you guys that's personal experience right there uh so just watch out for that one okay be careful uh be, be careful with this stuff anyone have any, any, any thoughts? The, the level seven crab joke <laughs> no, that was, oh perfect. was that rex well now that was uh that was uh randy that, <laughs> he died yeah. to a level seven crab the, the, and then quit the, the game. Just for context, it, so yeah, a few, basically, um, after my last raid, well, the last raid tournament, Elitist Raiding Party three, um, a lot of us went to go play WoW Classic, which was releasing just after that tournament. And yeah, most people actually quit within the first day because they died to and some form it. of wildlife. Yeah, and yeah, the, handle it. the level Too seven, lazy. the level seven crab was yeah, it was Randy. He died to a level seven crab while he was correct collecting crawler mucus, and he Love uninstalled it. the game on the spot. Yeah, that's true. Did they, yeah, like, they have that be the Brazil. same drop rate too, because like in original, like in actual vanilla, the drop rate for crawler mucus and like <laughs> the the freaking crab meat was like point zero zero five percent. So I would be pissed if I finally had one to loot and something killed me. I can say that. Yeah, uh, I, it's yeah. it's understandable, right? It it, it is uh, definitely Rex, understandable. Rex quit from SAB. He couldn't handle SAB. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh man, right. that is very good. Yeah, that is extremely good. Oh, wait. good times. Yeah. Oh, have, have you, um, did you, wait, did you experience a super adventure box, Andrew? I think you did, right? I did a little bit, yeah, you know, with my did, fiance. Did you do tribulation mode? No. Oh. I didn't get a chance to do it. I wanted to, but I didn't get a chance to. Oh, we've had, we're that is planning our wedding, and so yeah. we've had, like, a ton of people to talk to, and I never, like, got the chance to sit down and do it. So, I wanted to, though. I mean, maybe I should have, maybe I should have gotten it and used taco for it. I don't know. Whoa. No, no, no. Oh. you got to have the real experience. You have to have the... I know. I was just... I was, I was picking. I was picking. <laughs> you taco. need the real experience there. The taco experience uh, is not uh, the real deal. But yeah. You know, I, like, you've got to be careful, though. You know, like, I've... 
I, 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 yeah, one of one of my uh, one of my friends in the game, best friends even actually, he rage quit over SA, but he uninstalled the game because you know he, he couldn't Oof. do it. He fell off the edge, fell into the waterfall, uninstalled Guild Wars two, broken, Bad mentally broken. Link the, link the clip. Yeah, that's so sad. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah. Th th this, no, this, not this, this guy. <laughs> Nothing of value was lost. Yeah, this is a very good clip actually. Like here is a, here is a clip. I believe this is Kevin. Oh my actually. god, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm, I miss Rex and all the spaghetti bowls in the background, the noises yeah. and the kitchen noises and so forth. Do you miss old? Uh, you miss uh, doing uh, raids with Mystic Builds? Um, <laughs> group two. You miss group I do, two. I do. Yeah. Group like, two. Yeah. Yeah. Gr yeah? yeah you, enjoy, you enjoyed. That. Oh man, those are some. Yeah, look, we yeah, got to bring yeah. that back. Listen, guys, we do not look to the golden days. We make new golden days. With end of dragon. We make platinum days. Yeah. We make platinum three days. Nice. Platinum three days indeed. Let's go. Disband at second boss. Listen, guys, okay. Group two did disband. This is this is a big th okay. This is the horror of being maybe a streamer or maybe just like a guild leader. Because my guild used to be very large. And it's even larger now, in fact. I've got a big guild, you guys know what I'm saying. Um, but back in the day, there were a lot of raids going on, and I would be streaming the raids and what would happen is, is that there will be multiple groups forming, sometimes even like four or five groups. And the problem with this is that I would only be in one of them and everyone would obviously want to be in my group because I want to play with streamer. And what would happen is, is that the group two or the B team would often disband before even clearing the trash or just disband before, you know, the second boss or after like one boss. Right, like but was, real group uh, two... Good. That wasn't real group two. Real group two was when the, the wing came out. We had a, a secondary group go and clear it just just short of Teapot's time, actually. It's, well, do you know why? It wasn't it's bad. It wasn't it's bad. because, do you know, okay, look, and actually he'll remember this too. Do you know why that was? It's because I didn't know Patho then. I didn't know, um, I wasn't familiar with Patho, and he carried you. Oh, okay. It was just Patho. Yep. Good. 1v9. 1v9. Actually true. Right. Uh, Just like Kappa Jungle 1v9. Yeah, it is definitely a 1v9 situation. Big 1v9 right there. Uh, anyway, I think that actually kind of wraps things up fairly well there, actually. Um, 40. Did I miss anything, guys? Did I miss anything? Can you remind me? I think we did all of it, right? Yeah, Inks, brought, Inks even brought up the marionette uh, not being Booba anymore. So we've like, literally got all of it. <sighs> We got everything. Yeah, yeah. We covered it everything. Her butt and removed her boobs. Yeah, absolutely incredible, guys. Uh, no, we're not talking about the Zoja thing, dude. Okay, like we're not. No, we're not going there, guys. Okay, <laughs> we're not doing that. It's not happening. No, 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 no. Have you heard about oh. Juni's art commission? Wait, no. What's he commissioned? Teapot, did I tell you about that? No, you didn't. Oh, Do I, want I can't say it on stream. I don't think I even want to know, to be honest. You, I mean, you might not, but it's really, it's, it's, yeah. it's bad. <laughs> It's but, really it involves Zoja and it's really bad. Oh god. Yeah, well let's just not even go there. Right, you know, like we, we don't need to we don't just spread the Zoja stuff more than it already has been, okay? Like this is already out of control. But anyway, I think that will just about wrap things up uh for this tea time, in fact. Uh here because I think we've gone through all the topics. An incredible discussion. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of uh, impromptu show here on a Wednesday on my usual day off. There you go. I might try and bring back tea time in the future. Uh, you know, you guys can let me know if you want tea time to return in a more eventually permanent fashion, right? Maybe even on a Wednesday, my because it is ba this is my day off. I love chatting about the game. I'm chatting with the crew, with the gang about Guild Wars Two. You know, I love to see it. It's good stuff. But anyway, uh, that leads us to the most important thing: as all those topics irrelevant compared to the one that, that we're about to discuss right now. And that is, of course, the fact that we have to sell out a bit. Okay, so, I mean, <laughs> a new member of the Tea Time cast, a new member of Guild Wars 2, in fact. Okay, like, it went... <laughs> it's Zandri. Welcome to the show, of course, for the first time. I hope you had some fun here. This is a bit of a different podcast uh, to <laughs> some of the other ones here with a lot of memes and a lot of uh, different approaches to conversation. Some uh, fiery characters here. Inks and Brazil for your first time. That is quite the introduction to the podcast. Tell us a little bit about yourself and, of course, right, what you're doing, when you're going to be doing it, and where we could find you. Lay it on us. 
<laughs> no, it was a lot of fun. I, this is actually the second podcast that I've been asked to be on since I started playing Guild Wars 2. I normally do the podcast, so this was quite a bit different. Uh, but I had a ton of fun. Thank you guys so much for uh, inviting me. And yeah, so I stream uh, pretty much every single day except on weekends. Um, so the time has varied because internet in Wisconsin is uh, kind of crappy with Spectrum. So, uh, but you can find me at twitch.tv slash Xandry. I also post YouTube videos pretty much every day of whatever I have an interest in. I'm trying out a lot of MMOs, I've been playing Guild Wars 2, we'll be playing Guild Wars 1, things like that. Um, and also Final Fantasy 14, going back to that. So that's uh, YouTube, <laughs> dot com slash ta zandri t e h zandri um i also have discord twitter everything is ta zandri except uh my twitch that's just zandri but thank you guys appreciate it there it is okay and then in the top right hand corner the man responsible for the gpu shortage and why you can't play guild wars 2 at a good frame rate Stop. Playing the dumpster PCs, stealing usable hardware from his neighbors, disposing of their machines. It is MMO Inks. It's not true. Lies. <laughs> Lies. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Had a fantastic time. Love tea time. Love the crew here. Uh, it was nice to meet and, and uh, be on a podcast with Xandri. And uh, I look forward to... 27th and maybe another tea time or something oh yes indeed but yeah you can find inks guys uh, oh by the way for all the youtube friends and the twitch friends links are below click them okay click them and you guys can spam stuff in the chat as well if you want to by the way you can just spam it just go but yeah links are below click them have a look at all the gamers and finally okay he has many names and by many i mean two <laughs> it is uh on the world video preston aka brazil who i believe is making a bit of a return to streaming, I believe. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, um, so I am going to be streaming. I'm thinking about probably doing it like three days a week. Um, in addition to yours too, I'm actually going to try and stream photography. So if I can figure out how the fuck to use a GoPro and like get that on my iPhone and not run out of mobile data while I'm doing it. Um, I love to do that. Like I go out into Dallas a lot, talk with people, take pictures of stuff that's going on. And believe me, there's some crazy stuff that happens out there. Oh my goodness. So I'd love to be able to stream that as well in addition to the game. Uh, but other than that, I've been away for a bit. Uh, I've been making art, doing photography, doing a lot of cool stuff. And I just haven't wanted to play Guild Wars 2. Now Guild Wars 2 is on its full redemption arc. And I would like to come back, play my old characters, have a good time. Meet new friends, talk to old friends, and just kind of enjoy the game again. And you can find me on Twitter. Everywhere is Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. Uh, it's all at UWV underscore Preston. If you just want to get like a general thing, just want to see like briefly like what I've been up to, you can just go to uh, underworldvideo.com. It's got portfolios, it's got all my work. Um, and check it all out there. You can find all my social links. You can see Sarah's editing too. That is Ooh. on the website too. Uh, yeah, Sarah is my editor. She's a wizard. So Ooh. anyhow, uh, you can check my stuff out. If you want to buy my art, you can find links to that. If you want to buy my NFTs, if Inks wants to give me the Ethereum that he mines, <laughs> you can buy my <laughs> NFTs too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's 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 about, uh, that's about it for me. Yes. All right, then. And finally, of course. It is me. If you like Tea Time, you like Guild Wars 2, if you like arguing with me and making me very angry at you, okay, then oh boy, you guys have arrived at the right stream. Hit the follow button there as well. Subscribe and hand over all your money as well. Uh, join Hard Suck Discord as well, okay? Hard Suck, big community project. Look, you guys have got to do something for like seven months now. You might as well join Hard Suck. Nearly 10,000 members in Discord. By the time the expansion comes out, guys, let's go 30,000, uh, 30, 50,000, a million people in the Discord. Easy. In fact, Every single Guild Wars 2 player will be absorbed into our Discord there as well. So yeah, same thing here for me as always though, guys. Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, buy a teapot, go follow it, go watch all of it, go watch this video again. Like, you know, this is going to be on YouTube too. So think about this, you're watching now, boom, go and watch it again later on there as well. Get the double dip of tea time. And of course, 
Thank you all to my wonderful guests for hopping on board. Make sure you check out all that. They're making some great content here for Guild Wars 2. Inks, of course, uh, actually reacting to everyone else's content. He's really kind of, like, not only is he mining Bitcoin, gaming the system, he's gaming the YouTube system as well by being the React God no, didn't work. of Guild didn't Wars 2. Wait. <laughs> react Andy. Let's go. Yeah, React... <laughs> But anyway, that's... people really hated that. It didn't work. So. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. But thank you guys so much for watching uh, once again. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you all uh, in the future, I am sure. And yeah, I'm going to stream it. now, by oh, the way, if oh, anyone wants to Oh, come wow. Say hi. There you go. Like, there is the uh, Boda Street there as well from Brazil. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Farewell. And we will see you all next time. Good night, my friends. See you in the mist. See you later. See you in the mists.